The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state. Our news. Our home. Local sports now. It's the 302 Sports Friday Night Downstate Game of the Week. Welcome to Delaware's premier high school football pregame show brought to you by Sodell Concepts. 12 chef-driven restaurants on the culinary coast in southern Delaware. Now let's go live to your host of the Sodell Concepts pregame show, Benny Mitchell. And welcome to Delaware Live Sports Friday Night Downstate Game of the Week. It's homecoming here at Cape Malibin High School. You're watching the Sodell Concepts pregame show. I'm Benny Mitchell, and joining me shortly is my broadcast partner, Scott Cameron. It's week seven. And after this weekend, the future of many teams in the state will start to become apparent. Only eight teams will make the state tournament in each class. Tonight, the Cape 11 Vikings, 4-1, and one, are looking for their first 500 or better season since 2020. The Vikings are mostly like a, most likely a bubble team right now to make the state tournament, but a win tonight keeps their postseason hopes alive. For Caesar Rodney Riders, they are 0-6. There will be no state tournament. They play a different role over the next four weeks. They will play the role of spoiler. And Scott, they have the athletes to ruin somebody's season. Absolutely, Benny. And this is an old Henlopen North showdown here. Uh, heading towards the end of the season, you got two teams with a lot of history, Cape Henlopen and Caesar Rodney. We're looking for a real battle tonight. We saw a lot of potential out of Cape last week. They were on the losing end of a battle with Sussex Central, but we saw some things that uh, I really think they could build on. Tingle looked really good. James, obviously. Scott, Frederick. <clears throat> Cunningham played well. But for me, Cape is really looking for their identity in big games. I think they, um, you know, they had some really good games. They won four in a row, and then they've dropped two. So they're looking to do the basics good. They're looking to tackle. They're looking to make their assignments. They had they got jammed up a couple times last week with uh, who was in, who wasn't in. So so hopefully they got some of that cleaned up. And for the riders, there there should be in a growth mindset. So anything that they do tonight uh, and the rest of the season, I think is just going to build on in the future. Uh, it, it's Coach Strickland's first year, and he's got a lot to build on. He's got a lot of success. He's been in a lot of different programs, and we expect him to get Cesar Rodney back on a winning track here in the next couple of years. Yeah, Cesar Rodney, they just need to put together four quarters of football on the same night. Uh, we've seen them live once, and they tested Laurel on the road. In that game uh, at Laurel, it was a third quarter letdown where they gave up 10 points, and then they went on to lose 24-19. Last week, they trailed defending 3A state champion Smyrna 33-20 to at the half, but then did not score in the second half. The Riders have athletes. They have speed. They have talent. They have all the ingredients. Timmons will be a, a quarterback tonight. This kid can throw the ball, and he's got receivers that can get underneath it. I think, Scott, they just need to forget about the losing streak, just play relaxed free spirit, high-flying type attitude, and just let it go. Yeah, I think you just got to relax. Play ball, man. Go out there, hit somebody, make a play. They've been playing, uh, you know, since Pop Warner, and these kids have been successful the whole time. They're on a losing streak now, but you know what losing streaks are for? They're made to be broken, broken and tonight right. might be the night for Caesar Rodney, and if Cape can do anything about it, uh, they're, they're going to uh, come out with their big guns on defense. Timmons, Timmons to Vitti. We've seen it a bunch of times. Timmons can throw the ball really well. He's super athletic. He's got some really good uh, targets that he can hit in open space. And Vitti, Vitti looks like a, he's a sophomore. He looks like a legitimate prospect, a guy that could play ball. So Caesar Rodney has a lot going for him, but we're going to see what, what they're made of tonight, and they're going to come out here and battle and uh, try and set the tone for this season and, and next season. Cape and Lopen comes in tonight off a 35-16 loss to Sussex Central just last Friday night. In that game, Marquis James rushed for 109 yards and a touchdown. Ren Scott was on the receiving end of a 46-yard TD pass from Jameson Tingle. But the Vikings drove twice into Golden Knight inside the five-yard line, Scott, come away with only three points. They can't let that happen tonight. Cape has got to finish their drives on offense. 
Yeah, and, and for many of us, we thought that was a turning point in the game. They missed a field goal, then they came down inside the five, got stopped, uh, made their field goal. So they came away with three points instead of uh, a, a two touchdowns, which we thought was certainly possible. So, and, and to, to a lot of us, that was the turning point in the game uh, last week. So K Penn Lopen is trying to build a system. They have a really experienced head coach with NFL experience. You could see by the work they've been doing in the weight room and what and, and their organization and how they're running things, it's there. They can return to their glory and their power of, of being in contention for state titles. It's been a long time uh, since Cape has been there, but we think this uh, current group can get them there. Folks, when we come back, we'll be looking at the Arena Deli players to watch for tonight's game on the other side. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Settle Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Hi, I'm Scott Kammerer from Soto Concepts. Today we're at Fish On in the Villages of Five Points. Come check us out. Fish On is committed to serving beautiful, simple coastal cuisine in a cool atmosphere with a happening bar, spacious dining room, and outside patio. Popular dishes include the seafood stew and fresh oysters from the raw bar. Fish On's recently renovated event room and is the perfect spot for your next event. Fish On and Lois in the villages of Five Points open seven days a week, best happy hour around. See you soon. And welcome back. Let's look at tonight's Arenas Delis players to watch in today's game. Arenas Delis, six locations. The original location, downtown Rehoboth Beach. Arenas Cafe on Highway 1 Rehoboth. In Lewis at the Village of Five Points. At the airport in Georgetown. Milford and the new Arenas Club on Coastal Highway in Lewis. And Scott, we will talk, start with the Caesar Rodney Riders. And the first guy we're going to talk about is John Case on offense. Nine receptions for 102 yards and a touchdown. Uh, 22 tackles on defense, three for a loss, and a sack. He's a big body on that end. Yeah, and Case is a junior, and uh, he's going to be wearing number zero, which is always one of our favorites. Uh, nine receptions for 102 yards. He's averaging 10 yards of reception for a tight end. That's usually the kind of numbers you see on a, on a wide out or wide receiver or someone in the slot. So he can catch the ball and, and uh, pick up yards after uh, yeah, after the catch. So he's going to be a big part of it. And if we're going to see Caesar Rodney break their losing streak, you're going to see Timmons get the ball to Case. Julius Timmons, number four, the quarterback. He's a junior. He's 71 of 134 with 1,053 yards, nine touchdowns, seven interceptions. Scott, he's also carried the ball 29 times for 208 yards and a pair of touchdowns this year. I mean, you don't see a lot of high school kids in Delaware with 1,000 yards with five games left in the season or four, however many games we have left. I mean, so he's on pace to really hit some numbers. We're a little bit, we're not sure what's going on. Yeah, because he's not dressed right he's now. He's not dressed, and, and uh, he, he was wearing uh, a pink jersey, and he didn't go through a warm-up. So we, we don't know if he's playing or not. We, they, I was giving him as the starter for tonight, so we'll have to see. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, you know, that being said, uh, you know, they're going to be uh, they're going to be scrambling if he's not playing. Right. And then finally, number two, Maxwell Vitti, the sophomore wide receiver, 31 catches for 456 yards and four touchdowns. Yeah, he's averaging almost 12 yards a carry, and he's only a sophomore. He can fly. He's got great hands. He's number two um, wide receiver. He split out on a lot of plays. We've seen him run all kinds of different stuff. He has excellent routes. He's got great hands. I mean, he he this Timmons to Vitti could be dangerous, and if they could get rolling, uh, K. Penn Lopen has had some trouble covering guys in the past, and I think that uh, the Vitti and Timmons combination could really get going tonight. And let's talk about the Cape and Lopen Vikings, and we'll start with number 20, Jukai Payne, senior defensive end, 27 tackles, four for a loss, two sacks, and he returned a fumble for a touchdown this year, and he was a bit of a he, – he had some uh, key moments in the game of Sussex Central last week, uh, setting the edge and, and turning things inside. Yeah, I was really happy to see his development. When we first were watching, we really weren't quite sure about what his role and what his level of impact was going to be. Uh, but 27 tackles, four for 
a loss, two sacks, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown. I mean, there's a guy that's a potential pest of the game that's really impacting what's going on out there, and we've been pleasantly surprised by number 20, Ja'Kai Payne's play. And at number six, Brent Scott, the senior tight end linebacker on offense. He's got one catch, or, I'm sorry, two catches for touchdowns this year. Five receptions, 84 yards. He's got a pair of touchdowns. But defensively, 48 tackles, five tackles for a loss, and three sacks. Scott, they have to have that. He has to be on the field all defense tonight. Yeah, I mean, what can you what can you not say about Brent Scott? I mean, he's a dude. He's out there. He's playing. He's shedding tackles. Uh, he's making moves. He's hitting people. He's He had a beautiful catch against Sussex Central that we saw. He, he is a senior leader and a captain on this team, and he needs to be out there for every play tonight for them to be successful. And finally, number seven, Mark High James, a senior running back, linebacker. 106 yards, or excuse me, 106 carries for 701 yards. He has nine touchdowns on the season. And defensively, he's got 36 tackles. Yeah, watching him last week and throughout the season, I mean, he looks the part. He is a legitimate uh, recruit. He's a legitimate running back. He's going to James Madison. He can, he can, uh, run in the middle he can run off tackle he can catch the edge so we've seen a lot out of him he's a very versatile running back um he's also he can be a bruiser if he needs to we've seen him catch the ball a tiny bit um but we like to see him maybe uh catch a little catch the ball a little more coming out of the backfield so he he's the spark plug that makes that offense go and if he could get running uh jameson winston can get uh jameson winston <laughs> Jam, uh, jameson tingle can get some guys open um you're gonna see uh, a cape offense click on all cylinders tonight Folks, we come back. Scott and I will break down the next game with the X's and O's. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Welcome to Surf Bagel. Surf Bagel has served the community in Delaware for over 20 years, providing fresh hot bagels, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, wraps, salads, local coffee and smoothies, and our iconic merch. Welcome to Surf Bagel. We're stoked to serve you. Welcome to Surf Bagel. And welcome back to Lewis, Delaware. You're watching the Set All Concepts pregame show on Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports, as we're getting closer to kickoff for tonight's Downstate Friday Night Game of the Week. It's time for the X's and O's. Let's talk about what the Riders have to do tonight to be successful. Scott, we said it in, in, in the uh, intro, they got to play four solid quarters of football. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the Riders have played more than two quarters right. of football in one game. Right. They have put together some really excellent quarters, and if they could string that together, sometimes that's a sign of, like, discipline or, like, maturity. But we have been seeing that. And, and the game we did earlier this season, we were like, man, these guys got potential, and right. they, they could pull it together. So if they put up four quarters of uh, ball tonight together, it's going to be pretty impressive. I think they're going to have to force some turnovers tonight, either in, in the run game or the passing game. They need to get some short fields and uh, get some confidence. Yeah, and the turnovers in high school football always come down to at the most in a, uh, right. um, uh, time when it hurts the most, and that's really what both these teams need to avoid because there's going to be turnovers, but th is it going to happen at an inopportune time? Is it going to happen when you're driving? Is it going to be a momentum changer? Um, so the Riders, if they can force fumbles on K Penn Lopen, they're going to put themselves in a lot better. And they're trying to end the losing streak. Right. I mean, when you you got to take chances and you got to make risks and you got to uh, do things like that. So forcing turnovers is right up the rally. And right, if we do see Timmons at quarterback tonight, you got him, Viddy, Kane, Case, Wright, and Bo Walker. Uh, Scott, they can't be afraid to get in a shootout tonight. Let it rip. Absolutely, and I think, t listen, Timmons could throw the ball. Why not Why not uncork it and let it go? What's the worst that can happen? So they've gotten some good protection um, from Meister and some of those other guys on the line uh, over the season. So I think tonight might be a night they could put it all together. And for Cape and Lopen, the Vikings, what do they need to do tonight? 
move the chains. Just get the, move the ball up and down the field. And that's really what w they do not want to get behind because with James running the ball and Tingle being able to throw to Stevenson and some of these other guys, uh, Brent Scott, I think that the the passing the short passing game works best is if you don't know uh, what the balance attack is going to give you between the running and the passing when they're just keying on the offense to throw that's when uh tingle has had problems in the past but um we saw a lot of really good things out of him last week and a lot of potential so we're hoping to see some growth here tonight scott they got to finish drives three points in the red twice in the red zone is not going to get it done and that was really the biggest problem against Sussex Central. That, that was the biggest change in point uh, of the game were those two drives. So if they could finish the drives here tonight, that will put them in a much better position. And finally, limit penalties. They weren't penalized a lot last week, but they were penalized at crucial times. Yeah, and once the penalty bug starts rearing its ugly head, the refs start looking, they're looking for this, they're looking for that. And, and what you want to really avoid is uh, flagrant fouls, uh, hits out of bounds, um, taunting, and that kind of stuff. I think there's going to be a lot of emotion on these two teams. As I was walking up, they were jawing at each other uh, in the tunnel. So uh, that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Keep your emotions in check. Play ball. Do what the coaches tell you to do. Uh, nothing extracurricular. Scott, we're going to take one more commercial timeout. When we come back, we should be getting close to game time. We'll be right back. Turn your vision into a reality with Capstone Homes Design Center, bringing personalization, luxury, and quality all into one location, where you'll meet with our certified design consultant that'll show you exactly what you're choosing so you can make the best choice for you when designing your new home. From first home to vacation houses, we build and design homes for everyone. Set up your appointment now and design your dream home today at Capstone Homes. And welcome back to Delaware Live. Downstate game of the week, powered by 302 Sports. I'm Benny Mitchell. Providing color for tonight's game is my broadcast partner, Scott Camera. Brandon Hill and Matthew Westcott's on the camera. Your halftime stats will be brought to you by Surf Bagel. We're approaching kickoff, so let's check out the playing conditions tonight. The rain is gone for the day. Uh, playing on artificial turf, fairly new. It's an excellent condition. Game time temperatures are 63, and there's no wind at uh, this point. Let's talk about some of our sponsors that make these broadcasts happen. Barkley Heating and Air, Capstone Homes. Juwan Johnson State Farm, Arena's Deli, Louis Pizza, Sodal Concepts, and Grandpa Max. So, Scott, that wraps up our pregame show. It's time for some high school football. And waiting for both teams that are back on the field. Homecoming here at Cape Olympic. Yeah, and great facilities here. Uh, nice big stadium, beautiful press box yeah. for us. Very uh, wide. At, at Really some of the best facilities. You can make the argument this is a small college, um, not a high school. So, I mean, absolutely beautiful campus here. Let's talk about some of the other games around the state tonight. In Class AAA, number two Dover and number at number four Smyrna, 7 o'clock in the big one here in Class 3A. St. George's at number seven Sussex Central. Number three Slazian at number six Apoquimenic. Number five Hodgson at St. Mark's in AA. Number six, Laurel, traveling up to Milford at 7 o'clock. And in single A, number seven, Seaford, taking on Brandywine, the number two ranked Brandywine Bulldog. Game kicks off at 6 o'clock. I mean, that Dover-Smyrna game, that is a big game for Smyrna. I mean, they they need to knock off Dover to win the conference, right? Right. To win the district. I mean, Dover's got it. Dover's firing on all cylinders right now. I, I, that's, a, that's a lot. That's asking a lot for Smyrna to have knocked them off tonight. What do you think about the Sally's Apo game? That could be interesting. Uh, Apo is, I mean, they're hard to figure or pick against. I mean, because just when you pick against them, you know, they're going to uh, they're going to surprise you just like they did at Sussex Central. Yeah. <coughs> Woodbridge and Friends might be interesting, too, tomorrow at 2.30. So the captains head out to the field. Scott, you got them? Yeah, we got number seven, uh, Mark I. James. You got number six, Brent Scott. And then you got number 74 for Cape Henlopen, Saul Carrasco. Caesar Rodney wearing the pink jerseys, it looks like. Cape going with the white out. Captains for Caesar Rodney, you got 77, Christopher Jamison. 44, 
Carter Stump. So seven, Kane. And looks like 39, Logan Heffington, a senior. Wearing a traditional pink and blue. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Normally they would be in white, but Cape and Lightning Globe inside on homecoming to go with the white out. Good crowd here tonight yeah. filling in. There's about a thousand Cape and Lopen students <laughs> wearing all white standing up right next to us. And you know, keeping them in the game or out of the game is going to be a big part of what we got yes. going on here tonight. And I'm looking for Timmons. Do you see him? Not yet. I I'm, don't see I'm, him. I'm messing with the computer here, so. I don't see him warming up. We're interested to see if it was uh, a bit of showmanship, gamemanship, yeah. or. Yeah, I, I was sent the roster, the starting lineups this morning at 11 o'clock, and he was on there unless something happened. He's here, so it can't be disciplined. Unless something happened in gym class. Yeah. And here we go. Both teams getting ready to come on to the field. <coughs> A little gamesmanship here. Who's going to come out first? And here come your Caesar Rodney Riders. They are 0-6 on the season. And here come the Cape and Lopen Vikings. Homecoming here at the beach. Energy here tonight, Scott, because you know we're sitting right on top of the stand, right on top of the fans with the student section to our left. So I mean, great atmosphere here tonight. And I will say, Caesar Rodney does not look like an 0-6 team. They don't certainly don't seem to be acting like it. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna step aside for the national anthem. We'll be right back after this commercial timeout. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not you know people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like to have all the seating now and the big table the bench seats it's great i love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day it was just a great experience we loved ours i would always pass by ferris on kirkwood highway so i knew that they existed we stopped in the showroom we just clicked <laughs> like from day one they did a total kitchen renovation for us ferris was so organized they were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not you know people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all this seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We loved ours. Prevent unwanted house guests from invading your home. With cold weather coming, overwintering pests are headed inside. If you're not proactive, you could be left with a pest problem. Expertise is needed to inspect, identify a problem, and offer environmentally sound solutions like active pest solutions. Prevention is the key to stopping cluster flies, stink bugs, crickets, and mice from entering your home. Protect your home with a proactive pest plan. Contact Active Pest Solutions, your local pest expert. For more information, visit DelmarvaExperts.com. Prevent unwanted house... And welcome back to Cape and Lippin High School. Getting ready for kickoff as the course gave us an outstanding rendition of the national anthem yeah and you don't see this much Benny the student section fills up at Cape so they're filling up the Cesar Rodney side too 
Oh, those are Cape students going over there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks like Cape is set to receive the kickoff. So sees Rodney. He'll be kicking off going from right to left. Gold helmets, pink jerseys, royal blue pants. Cape and Lopen moving from left to right in their all-white, white helmets, white jerseys, white pants. White out here tonight at Cape and Lopen High School. We're ready for the start whistle and get this game underway. And the kick's going to go, bounce about to 20. It's going to be taken at about to 10 and knocked right out of bounds right away. Who was that on the, on the force out, Scott? Looks like number 39 for Caesar Rodney. Let's set the offense here for the Vikings at the tackles. Bodie Frederick and GT Curtis. At the guards, DJ Schultz and Sal Garcia. The center is Tyler Cries. Your quarterback is Jameson Tingle, halfback Markai James. The tight end, Brent Scott. And the receivers, Lexton Westcott, Lucas Stevenson, and Lamar McCoy will get the Caesar Rodney <coughs> defense on the other side of this play. First and 10 for the Vikings. Ball at their own, looks to be about the 14-yard line. Yeah, and Frederick had a good game last week. He had his hands full with Moore Burdell, though. Let me tell you, those two guys went out of the game. And it's an option pitch out to James, and he's going to get hit at about the 18, go out of bounds. For yeah, that's number five for Caesar Rodney. That's Kassan Bay coming up with a hard hit from his safety position. For the Riders, the ends are Peyton Willing, and John Case. The tackles, Tanner Smith and Tristan Cooper. The linebackers, Parker Smith, Carter Stump, and Logan Heffington. The corners are Carl Ingram and Aiden Kane. And the safeties, Anthony Harris and Mason Boyles. Second and call it three here for the Vikings. Ball at the 20. Good throwing down for K. Penn Lupin. See if Tingle gets his old arm warmed up here. Hand off to James. Steps back, breaks a couple tackles, and he's going to be... Got the first down for the Vikings. James is tough to bring down, and it's not going to be one guy with one arm tackle. You're going to have to swarm to the ball carrier to bring him down, Benny. First and 10 for the Vikings. Ball goes out to the 32. Yeah, you're not, you're not, <laughs> you're not tripping that guy up. You're going to have to put two hands around him and bring him to the ground. Yeah, you're going to earn that tackle. So it looks like so far they're getting a steady diet of uh, James off tackle. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own, I'm sorry, 27. Jameson takes the snap, Tingle takes the snap, hands off to James, and he's going to pick up about three on the play. Nice solid three-yard carry for Markai James. Just your steady blue-collar running back. Okay, Penlopen definitely looking to use James to control the game and and uh, get some field position and nice long drives. They could they could stand for a seven-minute drive. Oh, that, like Kate, well, was, last week, Sussex Central had the ball for 11 of the first 14, 11 minutes and 30 seconds of the first 14. Yeah, so winning the uh, field possession, I mean the time of possession battle is a big part of it. Tingle looks out, throws, has a man, and tackled right away. That is number 18. I believe that's uh, Amari Jackson on the catch. Yeah, 18, Amari Jackson, he's a sophomore for Cape Penn Lopen. He picks up about five on the play, brings up third and two. Yeah, third and two. You think you're going to see James again? I would feed him the ball. He's my horse. <laughs> Tingle waiting for the play to get called in. Second and two here, or excuse me, third and two here for the Vikings. I formation, Tingle's going to go under center. Yeah, they got Brent Scott in the up back position. Matthew and gets the ball, and he is not going to make it, Scott. Nah, first man through. They stopped him. Looks like Caesar Rodney slanted right to the right side. That's number 44 on the tackle for Caesar Rodney, Cardinal Stump. He's a senior. He had a big game in the second half against uh, Laurel when we. Yeah, if, if you wear 44 in high school, usually you could tackle. <laughs> usually you're, you're the leading tackler. Yeah, it looks like the Vikings are going to go for it on a fourth and one. Yeah, why not? Let's roll. Let's see what's going on, and uh, we're going to give the ball up the middle again. So fourth and one for the Vikings. <laughs> this time to go to a split back. You got Scott and James in the backfield. The Riders loading the box, and there's going to be an offside on the left end. 
Let's see what the call is because Kate Penlopen is claiming Caesar Rodney was in the zone, in the neutral zone. Nope. The seven man crew doing a good job good. so far. They got it covered. They don't seem overly stressed. So is that going to bring up a punting if it's against Cape? You would think uh, so. I think. A lot of discussion about a uh, uh, illegal procedure. Folks, I have to pause. We are having issues with the clock, right? So uh, ignore the time up in the quarter. Uh, for some reason, it is not rolling for us tonight. There's a lot of pointing on the field right now. These are Rodney coaches are throwing their hands in the air. That's a sign. It went against them. So it's going to be all sides on the riders. Makes it a first down for Cape and Lopen. So he's saying illegal procedure on Caesar Rodney. All right, that'll bring up first down, first and 10 for the Vikings. Ball moves out to the 41, so first and 10 for the Cape 11 Vikings. Single back, James. He's got room, Benny. He's at the 50. He's got a first down in CR territory. He just looks dangerous out there when he gets the ball in open field, and it's going to take more than one tackler to bring him down. And so far, it's been the Mark Hyde James show for Cape Henlopen. Yeah. All right, we got the clock fixed. Thank goodness. Mm -hmm. So there's another first down. Cape Penlopen offense clicking on all cylinders here early in the game. Aided by one penalty and quite a few successful James runs up the middle. James again, right side. And he's gonna hit, go out of bounds at about the 36. That's number five on the tackle for Cesar Rodney. Kassan Bay, that's his second tackle of the night. Usually you don't you want someone in your secondary being your top tackler, though. So right, yeah, that means. Uh, that's usually not a good sign. <laughs> no. you, like this, you like your defensive tackles to be your uh, leading tacklers. First and 10 for Cape and Lopen. Ball at the Cesar Rodney 34. First drive of the game. K. Penlopen has number nine, Lamar McCoy, split out wide. And number two, Lex Westcott to the far side. Tingle drops back, looks downfield, has a man breaking open, but overthrows him. Incomplete pass, second down. Just missed a little bit with the touch. He had maybe half a step. He would have had to really thread the needle to get it in there. Good protection, though. Just uh, couldn't quite connect. All right, I, I can play full focus now, Scott. Got everything up and running. <laughs> First and, or excuse me, or third and one for the Vikings. Two uh, receivers to the far side, one to the near side. James up and the middle James again. James has it, and he's got the first down. He does. Three sees of Rodney Riders on the tackle. Including 52, Tanner Smith. Tanner Smith had a great game the last game yeah. we, we called for two, Caesar two Riders. Sport athlete also plays lacrosse for the Vikings, or excuse me, for the Riders. So First and 10 for Cape and Lopen Ball at the 32 yard line of Caesar Rod. This is your opening drive here. Homecoming here at Cape and Lopen. Westcott comes wide to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Pistol formation. Tingle takes a snap, reverse pivots, and not much going not much there. Going on there. Looks like they're trying to run a little bit of a counter. Yeah, 52 again in on that tackle. That's the second in the row. Tanner Smith, he's a sophomore. They were looking for a little counter to run behind their tight end, Brent Scott. 
Loss of about four on the play. Brings up second and 14. Smith just blew that play up. He was in the backfield. So second and we're going to call what? 14? 14, yeah. Throwing down for? Maybe a little tight end drag. Okay, to the uh, slot to the far side. West got alone here on the near side. You got Stevenson at the top. And West got breaking open down the right side. Oh, That's going to be a pass interference. The D-back kind of just ran through him. There's no flag. Or is there? There was no flag, so I don't know if uh, they thought they were just fighting for the ball. That's so, not how I saw it. Uh, I kind of thought, uh, and I was going to say, hey, not a bad spot for a pass interference because he's going in the, in the end zone if he catches it. So it turns out with the no call, an excellent spot for a. Uh, right. Now it's going to be third and 14. So third and 14, so definitely a throwing down now. They have a good kicker, uh, Kate Penlopen does. Uh, Wilson Ingersky. He thinks he's in range. I don't know if the Cape coaches think right, he, right. He, but he for sure thinks he's in range. He's been warming up since they passed the 50. So he's ready to throw it. Early score, Apple Quimenic leads to Lazy Adams 7-0 first quarter. We said it. We don't know what to expect out of Apo sometimes. You never and, know. And uh, Sally's, I feel like sometimes they're going to go off and play a national schedule, and other right. times I think, you know, they're going to be happy to play in state. So we'll see what the future holds for them. Third and 14 for Cape and Lupin. Two by two on the edges. James next to Tingle in the backfield. Tingle takes the snap, drops back, looks to his left, has a man open. That's Stevenson, and he's going to be tackled after a gain of about seven. He's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Stevenson ran a really nice uh, hook route. He was open. He, he slid to the open space. Good catch. I mean, he's definitely a really good possession receiver and uh, a nice attribute for Cape to have. Tingle delivered the ball on the spot to him and gave an opportunity to get some yards after catch. So fourth and seven. Looks like they're going to keep their offense on the field. Four down territory. And we have a whistle. We got timeout. Cape, Scott, let's take one with them. No score here with 5.21 to play in the first quarter. Cape on their initial drive of the game. We'll be right back on the other side of this commercial timeout. In life, some things just go together. Like a burger and fries. And home and auto insurance from State Farm. So, make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call State Farm agent Juwan Johnson and find out how you could start saving today. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. In life, some things just... And welcome back to Cape and Lebanon High School. The Vikings taking a time out here on a fourth and seven. I guess, hey, you're on their side of the field. You want to get it right. Yeah, and this is a pivotal time in the game. You have a long drive. I mean, it's, a, it's been a seven-minute drive. Uh, going on seven minutes, and uh, they want to finish up and get some points here. It's fourth and seven, and, you know, Coach Frederick wants to make sure he's got the right play, the right personnel. That's one way to do it. Call a timeout and double check. Fourth and seven for the Vikings. Same formation. Motion comes from the far side. Tingle moves to the right, has a guy open, and that is not going to be a first down. Ball's on the ground. It's going to be Sierra Ball anyways. Yeah, either way, they're going to get it. I think the ball came loose as he was trying to uh, go for that extra yardage. He was short of the first down either way, though. Right. So that's going to get turned over on downs. Not a bad drive for Cape Penn Lopen, no. though. They put together a good little drive and uh, put the pressure and field position uh, on Caesar Rodney to see what they could do here. So let's see if Timmons is playing. Looks like he is. So first and 10 at the, uh, their own 25. Here come the Caesar Rodney Riders. And Julius Timmons is at quarterback. Yeah, so Timmons didn't, didn't warm up at all. 
and kind of stood and watched. That is a fork, right? Yeah, it is. Yep. So we don't know if that was some showmanship or he was just warming up and didn't need to warm up anymore. That's a handoff to number 25. That's yep. a, um, sincere right. Let's get this uh, Caesar on the offense, Scott. At the tackles, Owen Meister and Christopher Jamison. The guards, Caleb Kellum and Tanner Smith. The center is Ethan Kak Caparo. The quarterback is Julius Timmons. The running back, Seth Typhon Bo Walker. Uh, the receivers are Sincere Wright, Maxwell Vitti, Aiden Kane, and John Case. We'll get the, uh, the Vikings defense on the other side of this play. Yeah, watch him warm up. Sincere Wright looks like he's ready to play ball. I mean, he definitely looks the part back there, and, and uh, we'll see if he can pick up some yardage for Caesar Rodney. Trips to the far side for the Riders. Long receiver on the bottom side. Pistol formation. Timmons takes a snap. Drops back, looks left, has a man open. That's Vitti, and Vitti's going to pick up about five on the play. Timmons got some zip on that ball. He gets out of his hand in a hurry and gets the receiver. Uh, gives gives Vitti an opportunity to make a play. K. Penloven just right there, though. No, nothing doing for Vitti. Really couldn't shake loose. Let's set this K. Penloven defense at the end. Jakai Payne, Trey Batson, the nose guard, Sal Satori, the backers. The linebackers are Jaden Messick, Brent Scott, Jackson Cunningham, Dell Richards, and Mark High James. At the corners are Cam Joyner and C.J. Brewington and the safety, Lexton Westcott. Third down and five for the Riders. Yeah, Brent Scott and uh, Cunningham in the middle, really the heart and soul of this defense. Scott, all-state catcher on the state championship team. Draws back, throws, is tipped at the line. Well, that's and picked off by Cunningham. by Cunningham. Wow. So Cape's going to get a short field here with the tip pass and then intercepted by Cunningham. Ball at the Cesar Rodney 20. Yeah, Cunningham had a big sack last week that got called back uh, for um, a late hit on another player. So he's following up on that game today. Tipped and uh, picked off in the backfield. Big momentum changer yes, early in the game. First and 10 for the Vikings ball at the Cesar Rodney 21. K. Penlobin needs to convert on this, especially after stalling out on their last drive. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Cape looking to capitalize. James up the middle. James and going to be brought down. But that's number that, 25. That's Sincere Wright. Right again. Sincere Wright fired up. Made an open field tackle. Right. Nice job. He got up around the knees. And then as James tried to step out, he was able to get, the, uh, get around the ankles and bring him down to the ground. Second and town and 10 ball at the 21. Yeah, nice open field tackle. First time really James has been stopped on uh, by initial contact tonight. Yeah. Under three minutes to play here in the first quarter. No score. Two receivers go to the far side. Receiver here on the nearest short side of the field in the pistol formation. There's a reverse pivot. And that just... I mean, he's going he's to get some yards after contact, but Cesar Rodney has sniffed that. That's twice now they've been in the backfield on that play. Yeah, they slanted right towards that. They were in the backfield right at the right time, and that was number 39. That Logan Heffington. Yeah, Heffington. Logan Heffington. 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 Third and seven for the Vikings. Big third down. Drops back, looks to his left, up in the pocket, and touchdown. Great pass by uh, Westcott. Tingle to Westcott. Hit him in stride. Westcott had a step on the defender. Tingle delivered the ball on time in the end zone. So the Vikings strike first here with minute 49 to go in. So that's the Westcott's first, first catch of the night is a touchdown for K. Penlopen. Tingle's third completion. On for the extra point is Ingersky. Stevenson will hold. Looks like they're a little late getting out there. Hopefully they don't rush it, take a deep breath. Snaps good, holds down, kick is up. And it's good. Cape and Lippin takes a 7-0 lead with a minute 49 to go here in the first quarter. We'll be right back on the other side of this break.
Turn your vision into a reality with Capstone Homes Design Center, bringing personalization, luxury, and quality all into one location, where you'll meet with our certified design consultant that'll show you exactly what you're choosing, so you can make the best choice for you when designing your new home. From first home to vacation houses, we build and design homes for everyone. Set up your appointment now and design your dream home today at Capstone Homes. And welcome back to Cape and Lopen High School. The Vikings on homecoming straight first. They're up 7-0. And we'll be kicking away. And Scott, you'll have to get those numbers for me there. It's a deep kick, and it's going to go through the end zone. Yeah, and Gursky's we'll really showed a, a lot of strength on his on his kickoffs. A couple times he's tried to kick a little shorter. They've got into trouble, so... You know, I think if you got a kicker like that in high school, let's just let him boot it out of the uh, end zone every time. So the Riders come out for their second possession, first and 10 from their 20. They looked like they had things going, Scott. Then the tip pass interception, and that led to a uh, Cape score. Yeah, so far that's been the play of the game, the tip pass and the interception by Jacob Cunningham to give the possession to Cape Penn Lopen, and Tingle and West got connected for a touchdown to finish it off. Pistol formation with an up back here for the Riders. And it's going to be a handoff up the middle. That's going to be number 25 right. And it's like he's going to gain a couple on the play. Yeah, Sincere right picking up about four, it looks like. He's been playing really well on both sides yeah. of the ball. A couple of carries, few good tackles. Great open field tackle of James. That brings up, uh, give him three on the, on the run, and that brings up a second and seven. So this is our third homecoming in three weeks. Very exciting. Trips to the near side. We're looking forward to the festivities at halftime. There we are. Tim is in the pistol here. Takes the snap. Hand off up the middle. It's going to be right again. He's got some running room. He's out across the 35. This will be enough for a rider first down. Rider, uh, right for the riders, just picking up chunks of yardage. Nice stiff arm in the open field to shake loose of a would-be Cape tackler. It's going to bring up a first and 10, their first first down of the game. Ball at their own 38. Kane comes to the near side. Viddy to the far side. CR getting a little bit of rhythm here with Wright running and, and Timmons connecting the Viddy. Single throws out to, I believe that is Viddy. He's going to be close to a first down. Yeah, that's Viddy again. Looks like he picked up the first down. Caught it about three yards short and just kind of put his shoulder down and, and uh, put his team in position to get a first down there. So it's going to be a second and short here for a second and about a yard. We like what we're seeing so far out of the offense of Caesar Rodney. They're clicking. They're getting good protection on the, on the line. They're getting their skill guys out in space and getting them the ball. Well, that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Your score here in Lewis, the Cape and Lupin Vikings 7, the Caesar Rodney Riders. Zero. We'll be right back after this commercial timeout. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. And welcome back to Cape Penn Lopen High School here at Legends Stadium. The Vikings with a 7-0 lead as we begin the second quarter. Cesar Rodney, second and Scott, that's for those more like inches now that they've those right in front of us. <coughs> the angle looked a little longer, but. Second and inches. I think they're going to give it to right again. They do sometimes go under center. We'll see if they do it here. I've seen them a couple times this year go under center, but not here. So second and inches for the Riders. Right to the right of Viddy, or correction, 
Timmons. Timmons takes the snap. They're going to throw. Steps up in the pocket, throws downfield. So you got it? Uh, incomplete. Incomplete. I tell you what, Took though, he uncorked that inches. one. He, he really uncorked that one, Benny. You could see why he's got 1,000 yards already right. on the season. Coach Strickland taking the chance there on second and short. So What I really, what I really like uh, about Tim is he stands in that pocket. He felt that pressure. He stepped up, took a couple steps up, and uh, uncorked that one. He, he's got a good uh, presence in the pocket. It's nice to see. He's going to bring up a third and inches for the Caesar Rod and your honors ball at their own 47. Probably a good opportunity to take a chance second and inches uh, with a long ball down the field. Come back here and maybe quick run it. It's going to be up the middle with number 24 on the carry. Looks like he's going to pick up the first down. That's going to be Anthony Cox, and he's got the first down. Anthony Cox, a junior for Caesar Rodney with his first carry of the game. Their skill players, Scott, are all underclassmen, the Riders. Yeah, that's why we were saying that it'd be nice to see him with a little bit of a growth mindset in the sense that one thing goes right, and they could start to get a little confidence and start to build on uh, some small things going right. First and 10 at their own 49. Kane goes far to the right side. Vitty comes to the near side. Yeah, we've been real impressed with their skill players. Demis takes the snap, tosses out to right, and he's going to pick up maybe a yard on the play. Brings up second down. Yeah, that's number six, Brent Scott on the tackle for Cape Henlope in the middle linebacker. Second and nine for the Riders. Wright had a little bit of room on the outside. He just couldn't shake Brent Scott. I think he gets by him, and he's picking up a first down. Caesar Rodney does not look like an 0-16 no. to me, though. No, they're they look like a team that hasn't put together a full four quarters yet right. this season. They're not this playing a bad first quarter. I Timmons mean, drops back again, looks to his right, has a man open in the middle. That's Kane off the hands, incomplete. Brings up third and nine. Almost picked off by Westcott. Yeah, that tip. His kid, he's got some zip on his football. Timmons could definitely throw two, the ball. We, two we, quarterbacks here tonight that throw the ball well. Two underclassmen also. Mm -hmm. Third and nine for the Riders. Ball at midfield. Yeah, Tingle to Westcott so far, the only score of the game. Cape Henlopen up 7 nothing. Play action, a little bit of a screen, but it's going to fall incomplete. He was under big time pressure. That's going to up fourth and nine. He had the blocking set up downfield. They just couldn't convert on that one. Yeah, Kane had not turned around yet. That's going to bring up fourth down. On the punt is that a 70? Number 70, Deron Young, sophomore. Back deep is Westcott. Going to stand around his 25. And gets it off as a high floater. It's number 70, yeah, Deron Young, the sophomore. We'll call that a booming kick. And it'll go out of bounds. Let's see, at the 35, first and 10 for the Vikings. Not terrible field position. Start your drive. This is the third drive for K Penn Lopen. Not terrible field position. 10 18, play here in the second quarter. It's 7-0 the Vikings, and they have the ball again their second time tonight. And they're going to come trips to the near side. Looks like they're not sure about it. And the Vikings are going to take another time out. Well, the last time they took one, they scored. <laughs> so we're going to take one with them, Scott. Your score, capable of seven. She's Rodney zero.
Congratulations, Dover Federal, on 60 years in business in Delaware. You've been by our side since our doors opened. Thank you so much for giving me a call on so many years ago when I had no credit. You helped our business grow into what it is today. As a military family, thank you for supporting the financial needs of servicemen and their loved ones. Happy anniversary, Dover Federal Credit Union. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Dover, Dover Federal. Federal. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Local people, local decisions, Dover Federal Credit Union. Congratulations. And welcome back to Lewis. Cape and Lopen taking their second time out of the first half. That's going to leave them with just one. And let's see what the Vikings come out with the timeout. Last time they took a timeout, it was two plays, three plays later they scored. But again, another timeout where somebody's not aligned right here. So here they come, they come out with deuces on this side this time. And it's going to be a handoff to James, cuts it back up the middle, and goes down. It's going to be game of about nine. Five or six tacklers in on that, including zero, John Case, and number 52 for the Riders, that's Tanner Smith. And they're going to go right on the ball, a little up-tempo here, second and one. I like the up-tempo. Let's keep it rolling. James again, he is hit in the backfield. 51 on the tackle. Yeah, and That's Stephen Davis. Yeah, Stephen Davis, he was in the right place at the right time. He almost took that handoff right. Uh, right from Tingle. Loss of, let's see where they go with it. Loss of about three on the play. That's going to make it third and five. Yeah, well, third and four maybe. Yeah, third and four. So it brings up a crucial third down for K. Penn Lopen because this is definitely not four down territory. Not with the way uh, Caesar Rodney's been moving the ball. You don't want to give him this much advantage. No. So this is a crucial third down conversion right here. And they're going to take another timeout, Scott. Coach Mike Frederick over here talking to the back judge. I'm not sure what this conversation would be about, but I don't know. But that's going to be their final timeout. I mean, you might as well use your timeouts. You got all three, right? right. There's uh, nine minutes left in the second quarter. Is that right? So yeah, nine minutes exactly. I mean, this is a crucial third down opportunity. So probably not the worst. If if you quite don't have the personnel, or you know, you're not quite, you know, you guys aren't quite sure. I, you know, you have a true freshman quarterback. You know, sometimes stuff's going to get lost a little bit in, um, you know, sending the plays in. So not not the worst thing to they call a timeout. Are they signaling the plays in? Let's check to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're signaling them in. Third and four for the Vikings. They're out of timeouts for the rest of the first half. Nine minutes to play here in the second quarter. Trips to the far side. Lone receiver here on the bottom. Looks right. Throws. Has a man open and it's complete. Let's see if we can get a number on that. That's 18 for K Penn Lopen. That's Amari Jackson, Jackson with the catch. He's a sophomore. Catch. His second catch of the game. That's a big third down conversion, so I guess that timeout was worth it. <laughs> you okay. Bless you. Yeah, sometimes, you know, especially, you know, second year for coach, hey, let, let's get a timeout and figure out what we're doing. And, you know, it's not four down territory, so let's let's make sure we know what's going on. First and 10 at the Cesar Rodney 47-yard line. Two by two on the edges with James to the right of Tingle. Tingle in the shotgun. Tingle takes a snap. Hand off to James. He's got some running up the middle. Breaks it to the outside. He's inside the 20. That's going to be another Cape Penn Lopen touchdown. James with a big touchdown streaking down the right side of the field. Caesar Rodney could not catch him. They had the angle on him, but James just outran it. And that's the second touchdown of the night for K Penn Lopen. Lex Westcott with the first one, and Markai James picking up the second one here for Cape. Puts him ahead 13 0. They're going to try and convert this extra point. And Gursky on for the extra point. Wilson and Gursky, plenty of leg for this. Does he have the accuracy? Good snap, hold, a little trouble with the hold. 
And he's able to knuckle ball through there, Scott. So that's going to be a 14-point lead for the Vikings as we go to this commercial timeout. Cape 11, 14, Caesar Rodney, zero. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of Soto Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Soto Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. And welcome back, and Gershie to kick it away. Update score out of Smyrna. The Eagles strike first. They lead Dover 8-0. Big Class 3A District 2 game. The winner will sit alone in first place. Well, I said you got Cape, you got Sussex Central. They're one to know. They're playing St. George's tonight at home. St. George is looming big on the schedule for Cape Hen Lopin. They're another, now they're up and yeah, they're, I think that's weak. That's think, the last game, isn't it? Yeah, and I think Cape Henlopen probably, you know, won't be favored for Dover and Smyrna as they're at the top of the conference. Uh, so that'll be a big game for St. George's. That'll probably be determined, you know, assuming tonight turns out positively for them. That might determine whether they're in the playoffs or yeah. not. Well, That's that, St. George's game. the other game. district is tough, too. So First and 10 for the Riders ball at their own 20. Pistol formation, two receivers to the top of the formation. Vitti comes alone to the near side. Timmons takes a snap, looks left, has a man open on the bubble screen, and he's going to pick up about seven or eight on the play. Yeah, and that's 22. Tyrone Handy and on the tackle along with six, Brent Scott. Pick up, a, I'll give him nine on the play, second and one. The Seaford Blue Jays, they lead Brandywine 7-0, third quarter. Up in Wilmington. Second and one here for the Riders. Looks like uh, Coach Strickland wanting to slow things down here a little bit, and we're going to get a whistle. Yeah, it looked like a blitz for Cape Hen Loop, and they All were blitzing size. one of their linebackers. Looks like it's going to be on Cape Hen Loop. Yeah. All size Vikings. That's going to be a first down for the Riders. Seven thirty-eight to play here. Second quarter, ball out to the tw uh, thirty-four. Same or not, got two slots here this time, and they're going to get them again. It looks like they were blitzing a defensive back, and he just tried to time it and jumped off sides. So that's going to make a first and five. Yeah, we talked about this in the pregame. Inopportune penalties right. is not what you want. I mean, you got them pinned down uh, in deep in your territory, up by two scores. The last thing you want is is let Caesar Rodney hang around, hang around, hang around. Vidi breaks something off, and now you're in a dogfight. Pair of receivers, east side, pistol formation. For Timmons, Timmons takes a snap, drops back, steps up in the pocket, throws downfield, and that's going to be intercepted by Westcott. Westcott with his second big catch. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds. And that's the second turnover for, we got, we got whistles here. Yeah, it looks like I saw a lead hit over there on the sideline. Looks like what looking the. Looking for uh, a flag, though. So two refs, but I don't see a flag. Yeah, he's throwing the flag now. He oh. did the old take it out of his pocket and wave it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's rarely seen. Right. That's going to be unsportsmanly conduct or unnecessary roughness. Oh, well, roughing the passer on the Vikings. So wipe off the interception, Scott. That's going to be a first down for Cesar Rodney. You know, sometimes in football you have no idea what they're Oh, there's go. the flag. He, it was yeah. back there by the 20. Of all the choices on that play, 
That was one I thought I wasn't going to. Two weeks ago, they were using pink flags. And it driving us it nuts. throws you off, yeah. You're just so used to seeing that yellow flag. So this is a first down. Timmons, Ooh. again, another one knocked down. That's number 20. That's Jackie, Jackie Payne. We talked about him in the pregame. He was, was very disruptive. This, yeah, this, he was doing this kind of thing here and there last week at Sussex Central. And here he comes again. I don't know who batted the first one down or the one that was an interception. Yeah, and he's got a high motor, and he's coming out on this play now. Second and ten for the Riders. Frederick's going in for him. Still in the pistol. Vinny comes out to the near side. And it's going to be a handoff to number one, Bo Walker. And that's he's going to lose yardage on the play. That's zero. Uh, Cunningham tackle him in the backfield. That'll be a loss of about four. Cunningham slicing through the line on a blitz to bring down the Caesar Rodney running back in the backfield. Loss of three on the play. Brings up, makes it third and 13. Yeah, I just feel like if K. Penn Lupin wants to uh, really go into halftime feeling good, they need to shut this drive down right mm -hmm. now and talk about building on little things. If CR could put together a nice long score and drive, it, this is a dogfight. Biddy to the far side, Kane in the slot to the near side, steps up, climbs the pocket, throws, and it's going to be high, too high, incomplete. It's going to bring up a fourth and 13. I love the way Timmons steps up in the pocket, though, and, and uncorks the ball. He's not afraid to let it fly. Looks like their punting crew's coming in. So on the punt, number 70, Deron Young. Deron Young looks like he won the punting competition at the first day of practice. He's a big boy, too. He can kick. Sometimes you never know until you line them all up and let them kick. Mm -hmm. Who could boom it? Good snap and gets the kick away, and he nails this one. Uh, good inside the 20. He, he can kick. Fair catch called and taken at the 21. First and 10 for the Vikings. They lead 14-0. The Vikings are going to have six minutes to put another drive together and try and go in up three scores. Be nice to see him get a nice uh, uh, consistent drive here, move the chains, get a little bit of success. on No timeouts. Right. Slays in and leads Apo 10-7. Sally's has a kicker too. Sally's got a lot of things. Right. <laughs> I like their quarterback. They have a couple of them. Yeah, he's a. There we go. He's a young guy. Two by two on the edges. Tingle takes a snap, steps up, looks downfield, throws, has a man open on the out. And he's going to catch it and go out of bounds at around the 40. <coughs> that's number 18 on the reception. That's Walker again. That's a, big time, that's a big time throw right there. He was wide open on the out. He was wide open. He was almost so open that usually you overthrow that guy. He gets his own, <laughs> gets his own area code. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Out to the 39, first and 10 for Cape and Lopen. Yeah, we've seen some flashes from Tingle tonight. He's he's flashing a full set of uh, a full set of uh, throws he's able to make. Hand off to James. James up the middle. And he's going to pick up. About four on the play, second down. That's number zero on the tackle. That's Case, John Case. He and James are discussing the play at the end. Give him a gain of three, second and seven. Scott, this is the week where a little more separation between the uh, teams. Now we're into division play. Yeah, and K. Penn Lopen looking to secure their first winning season in quite Tingle a while. Keeps it on the... On the option, he's going to take it down in deep into uh, Cesarotti territory. Tingle throwing, showing his dual threat capability, picking up lots of yardage right down the middle of the field. Down to the Cesarotti 34, first and, I, and 10 Kate. I kind of like his moves. He had a little bit of a stutter step going on. He had a spin move. He just kept matriculating the ball down the field. About to put Kate Penlopen in the... Red zone here. One more throw. First and ten. Two receivers to the bottom of the formation. Tingle in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Drops back under some pressure. And there's going to be a flag on the play. I'm going to say holding. 
That was 55 that had him in the grasp for Cape and Lopen. Peyton Wiley for Caesar Rodney had Tingle in his grasp. Tingle did get rid of the ball, but we suspect there was a hold. And there must have been a hold before that. And there's another flag up there where he threw it, so I wonder if that's going to be intentional grounding. I thought there was a guy in the area, plus he was in the grasp, so I, I don't know. So two, two flags on the play. But talking to Coach Strickland, so, and he seems somewhat happy. <laughs> Just glad they're on the other time. Yeah, exactly. Well, fortunately here at Cape, we get to hear because the referee will be mic'd up. That's on grounding. So I guess there was no one in the area. Right. Well, it also didn't make it back a line of scrimmage. I'm not sure if that's a high school rule. I know it's a college and NFL. But he did throw it kind of straight down. So I know when intentional grounding, there's a lot of depend. Things. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of uh, if or or. Right. Would you say subjective? <laughs> Super subjective. Second and 15 for the Vikings. So that, not bad out of there. They, they do lose it down. So Coach Strickland takes the penalty where they, they lose it down, lose it five It could yards. be worse. Tingle takes the snap, looks out left, has Stevenson. Stevenson brings it down, cuts back towards the middle of the field. And he's going to be hit, hit hard by number 11, Tyshawn Allen. Yeah, Tyshawn Allen with the tackle. And I will say that was, he was one tackle, yeah. one tackler away from breaking that off for a touchdown. Little bubble screen out here to the near side, and Stevenson just converted on. He kind of ran back against the green and uh, picked up one or two blocks, and he was off to the races. If it wasn't for number uh, 11 on the tackle, Tyshawn Allen, we, this could be 21 nothing. Third and five, so Kate picks up 10, gets the penalty back, plus five. And they're down to third and five. Ball at the 29-yard line of the Riders. It's another big third down conversion for the freshman quarterback here. Scott in motion. And Looks like somebody jumped off sides. On the flag. Looks like everyone's pointing at a Caesar Rodney guy who's pointing at a Cape Henlopen guy. Right. So. <laughs> and it's going to be procedure on the Vikings. Yeah. The key to that, if you're the defense, is, is to point all of you point at the same guy. That's really the key. It's when you're pointing at different guys, it's, it falls apart on you. So you do not want to see penalties bog down your good drive here. You've had some good drives tonight, K Pen Lopen has, and the last thing you want is to fall apart on penalties. And now they're back at a third and 10. <laughs> That's been the theme of this drive. Like Stevenson's out to the near side here. Brent Scott moves to the other side, puts three receivers over there. Drops back, Tingle under some pressure, screen, and he's going to be dragged down by number seven. That's Kane, Aiden Kane. Yeah, and he just kind of flicked it uh, to James. It was really a nice little play, and James was one tackler away from picking up that first down. So, looks like they're going to go for it here. Fourth and ten. No gain on the play. Kane showed some uh, to keep up with James. You gotta be able to pick him up and put him down. So fourth and ten for Cape and Lopen. And Aiden Kane's got some speed. We saw him break off some uh, big runs. Actually had a kickoff return uh, earlier in the season. Trips to the far side. Tingle throws downfield, incomplete. And that's going to be turnover on down. Caesar Rodney will get the ball to own 34 with 3.08 to play here in the first half. Yeah, Lamar McCoy was open in the corner, and they just kind of had a miscommunication. I think he threw it to the far pylon, and I thought he was going near pylon, so it was a little bit of, a little bit of confusion on that. Three Sally's, minutes left. Sally's leads Apo 17-7. Smyrna 8-6 over Dover. That could turn out to be a shootout. We like shootouts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Advertisers like them too. <laughs> <laughs> so first and ten for the Riders. Ball at their own 34, their third possession of the game. Uh, 
or four, that third, fourth. Timmons in the pistol. And he's going to go some play action rolls. Throws downfield. Nobody there. Incomplete. I do like that about Timmons, though. He throws the ball with authority. He's not second guessing himself. These two kids are just flicking the ball 30 and 40 yards down the field. I mean, they got strong arms. Yeah, a lot of potential in these two quarterbacks here tonight. It's going to bring up second down for the Riders. Strickland in his first season here at Caesar Rodney came from Milford. He was in the state finals in 2017, the, the old Division II state finals. And Frederick in his second season here at Cape and Lopen. Yeah, and Strickland coming back to his alma mater, right? Yes, he was a Caesar Rodney guy. Pistol formation, two by two on the edges. Timmons takes the snap, hand off the ball on the ground. Looks like Cape Penn Lopen's going to recover it. And that's going to be another turnover. And that's number on, 71. We got, we got a flag on the far side. For right now, we're going to give credit to right. number 71, Salvatore Satori, with the recovery. The band likes it. We'll see if the refs do. So it's going to be a local procedure. So turnover and. So, well, the second, because the other one came back on a rough in the passer, right? <coughs> so, second turnover of the night for the Riders. And we felt like they were the team that had to, to, to cause the turnovers, and so far, not going the other way. Yeah, I really thought they were going to have to play a perfect half to, uh, to keep the game close. And they, they have not so far. And Kate Penn Lopen now with an opportunity to get that touchdown that they turned over on downs last time. Hand off to James, and he's going to push the pile and down to about the 21. Yeah, it's number zero on the tackle for Caesar Rodney, John Case. John Case and uh, James have gone head to head quite a few times tonight. Four, gain a four on the play. It's going to bring up second down. Cape up tempo now. Still getting close to two minutes. I like the up tempo look. Especially this last week they went up tempo and they would get a penalty last week. Maybe they've cleaned that up in practice here. Um, James again gets skinny through the hole. That's 25 sincere right on the tackle. He was looking to strip the yes, ball he too. Was. I think he went down with both of them with the ball in their hands. Gain of five makes it third and one. Yeah, last week against Central they would, they would go up tempo and Something would happen. This week, not the same. They've got those, they've got those mistakes cleaned up from last week. I like the up-tempo, especially if some of your guys are having problems with a line. Maybe like, you know, let, let's just roll right through it. James again, sidesteps the tackler in the backfield, gets the first down. He's tripped up by Sincere Wright again. Sincere uh, Wright's having a very active game on both sides of the ball. First and goal, or first and 10 inside the red zone. James with another carry. Cuts it back, makes somebody miss, and he's, he's in, in the end zone touchdown. Kassan Bay had a shot at him, but James just uh, put the move on and got into the end zone for Cape Penn Lopen, puts him up 20 to nothing with the extra point here looming. Just everything going right for Cape Penn Lopen in this half. second touchdown of the game. And James. on the kick is in Gursky. James starting to put up some pretty impressive numbers in this first half. And that kick is good. It's probably going to hit the scoreboard. And Gursky with plenty of leg on that one. Folks, your score, Cape 11 21, Caesar Rodney 0 with a minute 30 to play in the half. We'll be right back after this commercial timeout. Turn your vision into a reality with Capstone Homes Design Center bringing personalization, luxury, and quality all into one location, where you'll meet with our certified design consultant that'll show you exactly what you're choosing, so you can make the best choice for you when designing your new home. From first home to vacation houses, we build and design homes for everyone. Set up your appointment now and design your dream home today at Capstone Homes. And welcome back to Cape Open. 
Wilson and Gursky set to kick it away. They lead 21 to zero here with a minute 30 to play in the first half. He kicks this one deep and it's gonna go through the end zone for a touchback. Sees Rodney will take over first and 10 from their 20. I mean, you don't see a, a lot of kickers all three through the end zone. Right, not in high school, no. <clears throat> not in high school. And Gursky making a case to be the pest of the game early yeah, on the first half. We've done half. that before, haven't we, with a kicker? Uh, a couple years ago up at same, uh, Sussex Tech and Cesar Odney, was the punter and kicker was putting everything in just where CR couldn't return it. Yeah, and punters and kickers can be MVPs. Absolutely. First and 10 for the Riders, ball at their own 20. So let's see what Cesar Rodney can get going here. Try and set the tone for the second half. Timmons drops back, throws. Has Kane breaking open, and he's complete. And they're gonna say no, incomplete. Beautiful pass though, he put it right on his hands. And that was number seven, Aiden Kane. We talked about him, he's a speedster. He's one of the keys of their offense. Just could not convert that. So it'll be a second and 10. Timmons came out throwing, though. He didn't even look go through his progressions. <laughs> he he just where, said, he knew who he wanted on that. we're going hot route, deep. We're going go route, red hot. Two by two on the edges. In the pistol. With uh, right as the tailback. And a little bit of miscommunication. Timmons is going to have to take it on his own and slide down. Somebody turned the wrong way. <laughs> But fooled. he's going to pick up three on the play. Hey, it fooled me. I was looking the other way. Yeah, he, he turned to the right and right went to the left. Third down for the Riders. Yeah, so far the tail of this tape has been um, Mark High James, and, really. And turnovers. And turnovers. Capus, they have scored 14 off turnovers. Right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Cunningham with the pickoff and then... 71 with the, uh, with the recovery. recovery. Yeah, Salvatore Sartori. Under a minute to play. Kevin drops back. Ball. Screen play. That's the number one, Bo Walker. And he's down to about the 50. Yeah, Bo Walker with like the biggest gain of the night. That's number two for K. Penlopen. Lex Westcott, Westcott on the tackle, a senior. We have another penalty? No, oh, we're setting the chains. Yeah, the Rodney has three timeouts here. The wristbands are pink and the flag's pink. So it's yeah, one of the guys is using a pink flag. Yeah, it's throwing us a little bit. First and 10 for the Riders out to their own 49. 28 seconds to play here in the first half. They trail 21-0. Timmons drops straight back, throws down to the right. And incomplete as number 10, Khalil Kemp goes up for the ball. He looks a little shook up on the play. Yeah, he, he landed went, flat on his back. <coughs> he went up and got it though, got it at the highest point. He looks like he's gonna be okay. Jogging off the field. That'll take the wind out of you though when oh. you're up at the highest point like that, land flat on your back. 10 degrees colder it would have been <laughs> right. like landing on a rock. He's going to have to go off for a play. Number 11, Tashawn Allen will check in. 22 seconds to play here in the first half. We'll have an extended halftime as it's homecoming here at Cape and Lopen. And Cesar Rodney's going to take a timeout. Looks like the play came in late. Yeah, not a terrible spot for a timeout. Hate to get a delay of uh, right. game penalty. When, and when you're getting things going in the right you're direction. When you're getting things going with 22 seconds left in the half. Down 21-0. 
Yeah, this has been all Cape Penn Lopen so far. Our North Crew, Scott, du has uh, Duck Castle's very first night game at Duck Castle High School. What an honor. Brandywine and Seaford all knotted up at 7-7. Seven seven. That sounds like a good game. Brandywine's what, top three? They're number two in the two, state right yeah. now. Hudson Whitworth, St. Mark's 18-0. Hoskin put it on Cape 35 nothing. Mm -hmm. That was that was ref gate. That was when that's the, it. When the referees were not they were in here and had way now. And then you had four. Yeah. Right. Were they at four or five? We were we were four doing four in the field, I think. Yeah. That just goes to show you they could do it with four if they that's, have to. That's right. And Ryder's late breaking her huddle, so ready to play clock or whistles sounded. Second down and 10 for the Riders. Looks like they got Kane down here on the near side. Vitty to the top. Looks like they got Bo Walker, number one in the backfield, Typhon. Bubble screen, and he's down on the knee. He gets the catch. He's going to lose a yard on the play. Yeah, that's seven, eight, and Kane on the, on the catch. He's a senior from Cesar Rodney. Yeah, Cesar Rodney going to use another timeout here. Use him in bunches. You got one more. 15 seconds left. That could be two plays. Actually lost a two on that play. I'll take a shot down the field to Vitty right now. Something on the sideline. You got another timeout. At the half, Smyrna leads over eight to six. So this is not gonna be a shootout. <laughs> That, that's a good game, though. Slays in 24 to 14 on Apo. Yeah, we didn't know what to expect from that game. Mm -mm. Apo's, they're just, uh, just when you're getting ready, like I said, they're hard to pick against because they'll, they'll make you look bad. There we go. Third and 12 for the Riders. 15 seconds to play here in the first half. They trail 21 to 0. They have a bunch down here on the bottom of the formation. Takes a snap, looks downfield, and throws in a double coverage. And it's going to be intercepted, a flag. That's number 17 on the interception, Kamari Jr. Joiner, but there's a flag on the play. I mean, that looks like in the vicinity of interference, but I didn't so see any interference. Something. It was really underthrown. Unless he pulled or tugged or something. The Cesar Rodney player got up clapping when the flag came down. It's going to be on CR. Okay. He's, uh, he's asking if he wants to decline it. I would think he would. Right. So it's offensive pass interference to decline the penalty, and that's halftime. So your score at the half, the Cape and Lopen Vikings 21, the Caesar Rodney Riders 0. Folks, we'll be back extended halftime. So we'll be back late halftime with our halftime stats brought to you by Surf Bagel as soon as they're added up by Dave Marvel. Folks, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. We couldn't be more excited about having our show here held at the Buffalo Wild Wings in Christiana location and here on Route 7, Brand new location, they moved here from uh, Limestone Road, and it's going to be the new home for 302 Sports Week. We're going to recap 
have some local college and, and professional stuff. It's time for everybody's favorite part of the day. Top five plays. Here we go. Stanley, your number one play from AI 76 yard punt return. We got ourselves the, the quality can here oh, yeah. on the sideline. It's 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 awesome to watch from this angle. To be honest with you, Washington. Whoa! Going up. He went the he went the floor 12. He left the, the, the first air at four four. I mean, those ups right there. You can't, you can't eat this stuff up. Looking to stay cool this summer? At Barclay Heating and Air, we're dedicated to keeping your home comfortable year-round. Family owned and operated, we provide trusted residential heating and cooling services to customers across Central Delaware. Our experienced technicians offer reliable maintenance and repairs on all major brand HVAC systems. From air conditioners and ductless systems to heat pumps and furnaces, we also sell and install top quality units. No matter your needs, we're committed to getting the job done right with honest and timely service you can count on. Invested in our community, we're proud to help families in more ways than one, sponsoring and donating to many local programs and organizations throughout the area for dependable HVAC services. Give us a shout or a bark at Barclay Heating and Air. I'm Chef Hari Cameron. At Grandpa Mac, pasta's our thing. We serve quality food fast that's not fast food. We make everything in-house and serve something for everyone. We're open seven days a week for lunch and dinner. Follow the noodle to Grandpa Mac. You've probably seen this a lot, but not all pest solutions come from a can. At Active Pest Solutions, we don't spray and pray. Professionalism and continuing education sets us apart. We are Quality Pro Certified, the mark of excellence in pest management. And we have an Associate Certified Entomologist on staff. Providing environmentally sound solutions to our customers. Our proactive pest plan offers the best pledge guarantee in the industry. We do what others don't. Active Pest Solutions. Call or visit us online today. It's active without the E. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSP.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? Welcome to Surf Bagel. Surf Bagel has served the community in Delaware for over 20 years, providing fresh hot bagels, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, wraps, salads, local coffee and smoothies, and our iconic merch. Welcome to Surf Bagel. We're stoked to serve you. Welcome to Surf Bagel. High Five Hospitality, founded in 2004 when we three guys- by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to. It was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. To have all this seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We love Ferris. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped in the showroom. We just clicked, like from day one. They did a total kitchen renovation for us. Ferris was so organized. They were on top of everything from day one. Always here when they said they would be, always on time, kept to the schedule. The level of comfort speaking to everyone that works at Ferris, they were just super friendly, easy to talk to, it was like they were friends, not, you know, people coming to work on our kitchen. The room is totally transformed from what it used to look like. 
to have all the seating now and the big table, the bench seats, it's great. I love coming home and just walking through the laundry room into the kitchen every day. It was just a great experience. We love Ferris. I would always pass by Ferris on Kirkwood Highway, so I knew that they existed. We stopped.
Welcome back to our halftime stats on the Soto Concepts halftime show brought to you by Surf Bagel. And there they are. The uh, stats, uh, they Scott, they're very indicative of the way this game is going. For the Riders, 62 total yards, 46 passing, 16 rushing, five first downs, three turnovers. Cape will open 224, 73 passing, 151 on the ground, eight first downs, no turnovers. The scoring uh, tingle to Westcott with a minute 49 to play in the first quarter. And then two touchdowns by James, one a 47-yard run, one a 12-yard run. Cape will open 14 points off turnovers. Yeah, Markai James have himself a day. 125 yards, two touchdowns, 17 carries, and named homecoming king at halftime. So he's having a heck of a day so far for Cape Hen Lopen, uh, putting everything together. Sincere uh, right, two carries for Caesar Rodney, 13 yards. Number 18 for Cape Hen Lopen. Four catches for 39 yards. That's Amari Jackson. Amari Jackson. Mm -hmm. Vitty for Caesar Rodney, three catches, 12 yards. And Bo Walker, one catch for 27 yards, lined up in the backfield quite a few times. Uh, hopefully it'll showcase him a little more in the second half. For passing, Timmons, five of 13 for 46 yards. And Tingle, eight of 11 for 73 yards, probably one of the better first halves he's had. And two young quarterbacks out there who can throw the ball. Uh, they have really good arm strength and uh, a pretty, really good vision. I've been super impressed by everything I've seen tonight out of both these guys. Um, the score is not indicative, but Cesar Rodney had their moments. Mm -hmm. uh, turnovers really, really put a hamper on three turnovers, Benny, in the first half. And Cape was, and the only reason, well, I couldn't say the only reason, Cape didn't get a chance to score in the third one because um, time ran out. Time ran out. Time ran out. Coach so Frederick declined the penalty. 14 points on uh, turnovers for Cape and Lopen. So they come back out. Cape and Lopen will have the uh, have the ball to start, right? Yeah, Cape kicked off. So Cape and Lopen will have the ball to start the second half. You know, thinking about some of the past games we've seen here today, we were talking about that coming in, the 2008 game with Deron Harmon for Cesar Rodney. Four touchdowns on seven carries. Yeah, I Cape was, Lopen I was lost at a, 47 to six. I was at a wedding, and um, and my son came here to the game, and uh, so he said he said third quarter's almost over. You guys gonna be able to pick me up? I'm like third quarter's almost over. It's like 7:40. What do you mean? He goes, oh, CR scored on the first four times they touched the ball. Yeah, not only did uh, Harmon not get tackled, he did not get touched. Right. And uh, I remember watching that game, saying. 
Cape's, Cape's going to have a lot right. of work to do. And then he, w he was gone the next year, went to Rutgers. And, right. uh, they went on to win the state title that year. Well, they won the state title And, you know, year. a lot of people don't know this. Harmon only played two plays in the second in the state championship game. He was hurt. He got hurt in the semis. They played Sally's? They, no. no, they played Sussex Central. Lost to him in the Rutgers season. They came back and beat him in the championship. I'll think real quick here who the – they had two good running backs that year. Yeah, they did. Yeah, who was the other running back I'm they had? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It was his, wasn't his brother, was no. it? No. Walking around at halftime at Cape Henlopen, tons of people here. Totally, totally surprised how many people. Mm -hmm. See, uh, Sussex Central had a great crowd. They announced a crowd at 3,082. But um, well, we they, questioned that they, last, yeah. last week. That's part of the – That's the allure of the Sussex Central. And the song was uh, – I can't remember what, what song. That's the, that's the Tommy Marvel Joe Booth act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're just along for the ride now. Right. We're just trying to drink their Pepsis when they're looking the other way. Our cameraman ate all their Rice Krispie treats. Right. So I'm not sure we'll yeah, be welcome back. Yeah, he's bummed tonight. No, no food here <laughs> yeah. for him. I'll have to stop at Wawa on the way out. He can go to the concession stand. Oh, man. But Caesar Rodney and Cape Henlopen have battled in all sports, really. Wrestling, right. football, baseball. They've had some great battle. Two two good sized public schools, both technically downstate, I guess you would say. Um, Caesar Rodney, I think, has the most state titles of any high school in Delaware. Uh, I think Kate might. Caesar Rodney it's has the most Division I state titles of any it. public school. Sally's has more than anybody. Well, they don't have girls' sports, right, so right. It, it throws it off a little right. bit. But, but uh, I know Cape's got some in both divisions. Uh, they want some, some cross country and some track. Because tracks is funny. It's like the first 15 teams are Division One, and the rest of the state's Division Two. It's kind of it's kind of weird how they do that. They have their own little setup. Yeah, and and Sally's I think won cross country, swimming, and another one like 15 years in a row. They won all those lacrosse titles, all the state. Soccer titles. Middletown 21-13 halftime over William Penn. A little closer than I was expecting. We hear from Smyrna Dover. That's the big game tonight. Eight six at the half. Smyrna, lightning delay. Ugh. With 43 seconds to go in the Brandywine Indian River game, seven seven. Seaford or Indian River? I'm sorry, Seaford. Seaford Brandywine seven to seven. Sean Green reporting lightning delay. Ugh. With 40 43. Would well, that be going to overtime anyways? Yeah, but still. Oh, you might be able to draw up a play during that. That's true. See, you get old hook and ladder, the old Travis Kelsey hook and ladder. We did get confirmation that Taylor Swift will not be attending. Uh, okay. Sometimes we don't get confirmed. We we contact their representatives on Instagram, and right. sometimes we hear back, sometimes we don't. But they officially said they won't be attending today. We'll see for next week. We'll right. have to get a request in early. Next week we'll be on, going up to Milford for the double-A game. Bucks and Bulldogs? No, they're playing tonight. Oh, Milford Tech. Milford Tech next week. First time will be our first chance getting to see Milford this year. Or, excuse me, Sussex Tech this year. I feel like they have heated games, too, Milford and Tech. It seems like um, – Well, Tech's everybody's rival. Yeah, Tech became everyone's rival. I wonder if they like that. I wonder if they like being everyone's I rival. I would think that would be hard to do, you know. I remember one year Sussex Central wrestling team had the, had the T-shirts that say, don't worry, we hate you, too. Right. <laughs> I think John Atkins called them the evil empire that year. That's what they used to call Caesar Rodney. And Gersky with another big kick into the end zone. He's racking up his points for uh, for me to give yeah. him a big vote tonight. Hey, he's not allowing And Cesar Rodney's got a few kick returns on the season. Oh, well, we saw um, we saw Aiden Aiden Kane with a big return. Right. He can fly. I mean, he's a, he's a speedster. So let's see what the Reiners. If they fix anything at the half, they come out, they trail 21-0. to zero. They get the first possession here of the second half. And they're going to go a little tighter formation this time. With a bunch to the left side. It's going to be a handoff to 
That's right, 25. Right again, 25. He's going to pick up about five on the play. Brings up second down. Yeah, sincere right. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of right, though. He, he can hit the hole. He keeps his head up. He does not shy away from contact, I got to say that. And he's, he's got a little bit of shiftiness to him. I think he could be a nice back for yeah. Caesar Rodney. Their skill positions, they're very young. Second down for the Riders. This time they bring Vinny wide to the near side. Bunch up on the uh, top side. And it's going to be, no, nah, that's going to be some, that's not. That's 25 again. Is it? Yeah, sincere right. And he's right. got a first down. Yep, 25. First down for the Riders. I feel like uh, Wright's getting a little bit of momentum here. They're starting to give him the ball on a regular basis, and he's he's getting downhill a little bit. I think he can keep him off balance and give Timmons an opportunity to to throw the ball. I will say this about Timmons, though: when he goes back there, he is not shy. <laughs> he is not shy. It's leaving. That's it right. is. It's going somewhere. Same in a hurry. formation here for the Riders. First and ten from the 32. High snap, toss out to right. Race following his blockers, breaks a tackle in the backfield, cuts it back to the inside, and it's going to get out to about the 40. Yeah, and that's 71 on the tackle. That's the nose guard, Salvatore Satori, hot footing it out to the yeah. sideline to make the play. He hit him so hard he knocked him forward for he another did. yard. So pick up eight on the play, second and two. <laughs> Satori was celebrating while Wright was still in the air from the hit. <laughs> right. This has been a hard-hitting game and, and a hotly contested one. There's, there, no one is shying away from contact so far here tonight. Second down and two for the Riders. Ball out to their own 40. Vinny, go, or excuse me, Timmons goes under center. Hand off to right. He's got some running room up the middle. And he's going to get up out to the 46. Yeah, it looks like uh, two on the tackle for K. Penn Lopin. That's Lex Westcott. Brent Scott went flying in. First down, Caesar Odney. Ball at the, their own 46. Caesar Rodney getting a little bit of rhythm here, moving the chains. Malcolm Yauk was their other running back for uh, Caesar Odney. Is that from a viewer or is that from? That would uh, be from my Cesar Rodney insider, my son, Dre Mitchell. Oh, he was a go. freshman that year. Timmons under pressure, runs away from it. He avoided uh, six or seven K Penn Lopin. Down the sideline, he gets the first down. And he steps out of bounds. Let's see where they call it. Looks like it's going to be a first down. The 42. I'd say he avoided six. Pass rushers. Yeah, I thought he was going to get sacked. And then he just ran away from it. that great speed. Showing his dual threat capabilities. First and 10, they grow into plus territory at the Cape and Lopen 42. Julius Timmon showing off a lot of his tools here tonight. Under center for the first Maybe time. Toss it right. And he's pushed forward. He's putting his head down and getting extra yards there, Scott. Looks like the ball went on the carpet, but it might have been a little late. It's 24 yeah. and 6 on the tackle for K. Penn Lopin. 24 is Quandrell Richards, Richards and Brent Scott. I think all, both of them were candidates for the homecoming king. Scott, I'm going to take a minute to thank Kevin Smith and Mike Connors for getting us set up here tonight so we could bring you this game. Also, Jason Feathers giving me some information uh, on the Vikings. And you have to say about Cape and Lubin, excellent press box for us. Yeah, I like this is roomy. Speed sweep with Vitty. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna get a couple. And yeah. we have whistles on the play. That's number two, Maxwell Vitty. Tackled by three or four Cape and Lubin Vikings as he's trying to turn the corner. So ladies and gentlemen, 27, Apple Quimanic 14. So the Sal's starting to pull away. Up in Middletown. The Sal's have an offense. They just need to get it running on all cylinders up there. They can be dangerous. It's going to be interesting come time in playoffs in D1. You have a couple teams bunched up at the top. Dover, Middletown, Sally's, Smyrna. Smyrna. 
Third down, long three for the Riders. Drops back, looks to the right, has a man open. That's Vidi again. He makes the catch. First down for the Riders. Right at the 30. Moving the chains. Probably the best sustained drive so far of the game. Absolutely, yeah. First yep. and 10 at the 30 of Cape and Lopin. We always say uh, good coaching. You come out first drive on in the third quarter and see what kind of adjustments you made. Bill Belichick, the master of that right. for the Patriots. Of course, it helps when you have Brady. She's riding a little slow coming out of the huddle here. Look, maybe some confusion. Two up backs here on the left side gives them a little bunch. Yeah, usually when a receiver is asking the center what the play is, that's and not a good sign. Yeah, they're going to have to take a time out here. Scott, we're going to take one well in your score with 749 to play in the third quarter. Cape and Lopin 21. Cesar Rodney, zero. Welcome to, to Surf Bagel. Surf Bagel has served the community in Delaware for over 20 years, providing fresh, hot bagels, breakfast sandwiches, lunch sandwiches, wraps, salads, local coffee and smoothies, and our iconic merch. Welcome to Surf Bagel. We're stoked to serve you. Welcome to Surf Bagel. And welcome back to Cape and Lupin High School. Coming in off the Caesar Rodney timeout, they have a first and 10 at the 30. And a lot like Coach Frederick did in the first uh, half, Scott takes the early timeout and get things right. I mean, a great opportunity for a timeout. You're driving. Uh, you're in good position. You're down three scores. You're not quite sure what you're doing on the play. Let's call timeout. Oh, a little reverse pivot. That's Counter action. That's 24 on the carry. That's Anthony Cox. And 24 on the tackle for Key Penn Lupin. That's Quadro Richards. And Cesar Rodney goes into the red zone for the first time tonight. Cesar Rodney cannot say enough good things about the drive they're putting together here right now. As bad as the first half went for him, maybe it's going to be a tale of two halves for Cesar Rodney. Update in Smyrna. Dover takes the lead, 12-8. Dover is tough to deal with. And they're playing without their one of the best running backs in the state. This is right again. He goes out of bounds after a pickup of about four. Wright does not go down. He goes out of bounds. He's a bit of a bruiser. Pickup of, say, four on the play. Brings up second and six. Dover's got it all going on this year. They have size. They have speed. They have really good coaching. They got the numbers. He knew it was only a matter of time. And they got a lot of the Wesley coaching staff. Right. Until they started putting things together. Ball down on the 16. Yeah, led by Chip Knapp, former uh, assistant coach, and then became head coach at Wesley right before the school got bought. Went out of business, however you want to say it. And that's right. Oh, a spin move. A solid tackler, and Brent Scott breaks down and just a spin move, and he just all he can do is drop to his knees. Nice move by Wright. Picks up a couple on the play, brings up third down. Yeah, Wright avoided the tackle in the backfield, but could not get much more. He was met at the line of scrimmage by three or four Vikings, including uh, number 99, Tremaine Batson. He's only a sophomore for Cape Penn Lopen. Third and five. Ball at the 15. This time so the Riders spread out their formation. Aiden Kane split out wide to the near side. Drops back. Pressure coming incomplete. That was Scott coming on the blitz. Looks like Vitti's coming up limping. He's got that look where he rolled his ankle, mm -hmm. maybe stepped on someone. Fourth and six for the Riders. Ball at the 15. He'll come off for a play. Hopefully he's okay. Kay Penlopen looking for a big stop on defense. This has been a heck of a drive by Cesar Rodney. Long drive. Mixing Approach, it up pretty good. Approaching six minutes. 
and that was something they couldn't do in the first half. I mean, it was, you know, two, maybe a three-minute drive and the ball, you know, a turnover or a punt. Really getting some good ball control. Most of the work done by Wright yeah. up the middle. Had the big run by Timmons. Fourth down. Flag on the play. Throws to the end zone. And it's going to be incomplete. But we do have a flag on the play. That pass was intended for number 10, Khalil Kemp. Covered really well in the end zone. Not much going there. We'll see what the penalty is. It's going to be on Kate, or excuse me, on Cesar Rodman. Looks like they're going to decline it. That's been a procedure. Yep, illegal procedure. So the Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 15. <clears throat> if you're Caesar Rodney, though, you, I, I hate to say it, but you might you got to be happy with that drive. Yeah. Nice drive, churned up uh, six, almost six minutes of, of clock. Uh, I'd like that Wright, Wright was running the ball well. They had good rhythm. They were moving the chains. Uh, could not convert, got into the red zone. Um, came up short on the pass into the end zone. Turned it over on downs. So their defense will come on the field, first and 10 for Cape Ann Lopen. And this is where Cape Ann Lopen could really put the dagger in the heart by a nice long drive, take it into the fourth quarter. Another score will put this game away. And yeah, a little counter play to James. Runs over, one run tackler, and he's gone. James will not be stopped. 85 yard touchdown run by Markai James. He's into the end zone for the third touchdown of the night for himself. And the fourth for Cape Penn Lopen. Lex Scott, number two, caught the other touchdown pass from Tingle in the end zone in the, Back in the first, first quarter. quarter. But since then, it's been all James all the time. Three touchdowns by the speedy senior going to James Madison. And Gursky on for the extra point. And Gursky looking to pad his numbers for the night. Four kickoffs into the end zone. And it's good. And four extra points. So it's 6.08 to play in the third quarter. It's the Cape and Lebanon Vikings 28, Caesar Rodney Ryder 0. We'll be right back after this timeout. Turn your vision into a reality with Capstone Homes Design Center bringing personalization, luxury, and quality all into one location, where you'll meet with our certified design consultant that'll show you exactly what you're choosing, so you can make the best choice for you when designing your new home. From first home to vacation houses, we build and design homes for everyone. Set up your appointment now and design your dream home today at Capstone Homes. And we're back. And Gursky set to kick it off. He's kicked, what, three, four out of the end zone already tonight. We're going to say four. And this one comes nice. up a little short. This one short. goes up to five. This is Bo Walker. He gets it out to about the 40. There's a flag. It looks like maybe a face mask on the play. Yeah, it's 32 on the tackle. Oh, correction, that's Kassan Bay. Cape Penn Loop and Ryder Bodis. A sophomore on the tackle. Yeah, he threw it right where the tackle was, so. I did not see it. So that just goes to show you on that return how valuable it is to have a kicker the kick it into the end zone right. four out of five times. Nothing good could happen when you let the mm -hmm. guy return it, right? Yep, face mask. So first down for the Riders. So their second driver to have starting out pretty good too. Good field position. We'll see if they go right back to what they were doing. Steady stream of right with a little bit of Timmons mixed in. So Scott, just think of this in class A. Seaford and Brandywine playing for first place in the district. And let's say this game doesn't get finished. You gotta end it in a tie. And as that throw things into a mix. I mean, what do you do? Flip a coin? Yeah. yeah. Pistols at dawn? I don't know. 
First and 10 for the Riders. Ball at the Cape and Open 45. They trail 28 to 0. Three touchdowns tonight by Mark High James for the Vikings. It's been the Mark High James show for most of this game. Down the middle, and that's intercepted. And that's Westcott with the interception. Lex Westcott with his second interception. Looks like people are getting a little heated. Yeah. Look, the Cesar Rodney get back coach is coming. Right. You guys need to get back. Now, will this be one of those offsetting? Yeah, we'll say situations? they're all tangled up together. I'm going to say that was more of a misunderstanding than yeah. a skirmish. Did it in the midfield. Didn't try to hide it, did they? So that's the second interception by Lex Westcott. He also had a touchdown that we talked about. Three of the refs have their hand on their chin, so that's <laughs> not a good sign for them. That means they're thinking. No, that means they're calculating the yards right. penalties. Well, it was two guys tangled up, so it's either on one of them or on both of them. Is it flagrant? They're all writing now. Yeah. If they're writing their numbers in the thing, that's... That, that's unsportsmanlike. That's unsportsmanlike. You try and stay out of that little black book. Mm -hmm. Well, they all put their books away. And we'll get a call. This crew's done a great job tonight. Yeah. They're not too many penalties. So, penalties both ways. I'm a big fan of the offsetting on uh, sports one likes. Yeah. Um, so, no ejections, so the Vikings will be first and 10 at their own 48. <coughs> yeah, they throw both those flags, just kind of to calm everything down, and right. then they all set them. No harm, no foul. Sometimes I, yeah, sometimes I like that. Sometimes I don't. Well, it's when. This one, I, I think, was a. Yeah, it's when you go two on one and one right. on the other. That's when you get that's when they get the penalty yards assessed. That's what I thought they were going to do. But. Right. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own 40. Get Tanglin James in the backfield. You got Amari Jackson, number 18, the leading receiver for Cape. Split out with Stevenson to the near side and twins on the far side. Tangle drops back, looks downfield. And uh, he caught that. Nope, incomplete. He had it and got knocked out by uh, number seven. Can't see that number. Can you? Is that eight? Aiden Kane knocked the ball out of. Yeah, Kane on like, the coverage. Yeah, it looks like nine. Nine on the kick. Okay. Nine. Lamar McCoy. That makes sense. Yeah. Second and ten. Five forty-one to play here in the third quarter. I think Cape would like to get one more and get this to a running clock. Tingle again drops back under some pressure, throws, and has number 13, Makai Savage, <laughs> on the reception. Yeah, and that's got to be one of the better. Yeah, we, we have a flag back here. It's probably going to be. I think it's going to be rough on the passer. Yeah, rough on the passer. Yeah, tingled under a tremendous amount of pressure and stepped up and got rid of the ball. Usually when the quarterback's putting their chin strap back on. Yeah, he got hit late. He got or hit face late. Mask. Yeah. Really one of the better throws I've seen from Tingle. Really stepped up, delivered the ball, put it on a dime in stride, cutting across the middle of the field. Kind of a deep crossing route.
feel like Kate Penlopen's offense is really starting to um, get an identity now. Right. And for Cesar Rodney, you know, another game where they really didn't put four quarters together. They had a couple of good drives, a couple of good defensive stands, but the turnovers really did them in. Yeah. I think they're right. I think they're like, what, St. George's? No, they play them last. Yeah, St. George's is the last game. That's going to be it. That, to me, is the most pivotal so game. So they must the, have Smyrna next week. They have Dover, Smyrna, and then St. George's. So they decline the face masks. First and ten on the pass play. <laughs> Ball goes down to the 26. First and ten. Cape and open. And it's going to be jet sweep, and that's wrapped up in the background backfield. That was number nine, McCoy, on the carry. He's going to lose about five. Yeah, McCoy just couldn't get any space to operate in. Uh, he had some green grass out in front of him, just could not get past the first defender uh, for Cesar Rodney that brought him down. We haven't seen a lot of jet sweeps out of Cape Penn Lopen. No. Mostly we've seen James up the middle yeah, really. and uh, short crossing passes, but it's good to have a little wrinkle or two in your offense. Second and 15 for the Vikings. Tingle takes a snap, looks left, throws. That's going to be incomplete. That was intended, intended for McCoy. Or no, uh, that's not Makai Savage. Savage. Brings up third and 15. Yeah, Scott was open down the middle. He was running a quick go route uh, down the middle as a tight end. And uh, the middle linebacker really didn't get a deep enough drop for him, and he kind of slid between him and the free safety. So we'll see if they kind of come back to that play again. That's the one that scored against Sussex Central. Right. Kind of set the tone early in that game. Third and 15 for Cape and Lopen ball at their own 32. They lead 28-0, 4.46 to play in the third. So a lot of times those linebackers get jammed up because their their drop is too shallow and uh, that linebacker sneaks in right behind them. They got to get a little deeper on that drop. Trips on the bottom of the formation, two receivers to the top. And we have a whistle. And it's going to be a timeout for Cape and Lopen. Scott, we'll go ahead and take one with them here. Your score, Cape 11, 28, Cesar Rodney, zero. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money, and who doesn't like that? Just call State Farm agent Juwan Johnson and find out how you could start saving today. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. In life, some things just go together, like a burger and fries and home and auto insurance from State Farm. So make it a combo. Combining your home and auto insurance could save you time and money. And who doesn't like that? Just call State Farm agent Juwan Johnson. And, and back here at Cape and Lopen High School coming off the Vikings timeout. Uh, third and 15. Vikings need another score for a running clock here. And they're going to look. Tingle drops back. They're going to look downfield. Get it on this play. And gets it down inside the five. Great catch, great route. Westcott on the reception. Westcott just finds that little soft, soft space in the zone in between the Sideline and two defenders. Tingle just put a nice touch on it. Tingle having a game. Yeah. And it'd be just being overshadowed by James right now. Which is not which no. is not hard to do when uh, someone wins the homecoming crown yeah, homecoming and has King three Hill. touchdowns. Yeah. yeah, there's not much you could do. First and goal. Ball looks like it's at about the seven-yard line. We're going to have to look through double dirty glass here. Looks like they get to play in a little bit late, but they got enough time to get the playoff. High formation for Kate. <coughs> Tipping goal goes under center. It's going to be Scott, and he's hit right away. Yeah, and that's 44 on the quick tackle. Stump. Carter Stump. Racking up some tackles for Cesar Rodney. One of the leading tacklers coming in. 
Scott's that up back. They like to give it to him in short yardage situations. Looks like no gain on the play. Brings up second and goal. Stump actually was playing like a it's playing like a defensive end position. He just crashed and scraped down the line. Made the play before uh, Scott could get rolling. And it's going to be a pitch out to James, and he's going to get to the pylon. Touchdown for Mark High James, fourth of the night. Yeah, they switched it up. Scott actually blocked Stump on that one and uh, freed up James to get into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the night. On the kick is Ngerski. And he makes this, and we go to our running clock. Don't jinx him, he hasn't missed one yet. And, and he's, he's good on that one, 35-0, Cape and Lopez, folks, we'll be back after this timeout. Congratulations, Dover Federal, on 60 years in business in Delaware. You've been by our side since our doors opened. Thank you so much for giving me a call on so many years ago when I had no credit. You helped our business grow into what it is today. As a military family, thank you for supporting the financial needs of servicemen and their loved ones. Happy anniversary, Dover Federal Credit Union. Happy, Happy anniversary, anniversary, Dover, Dover Federal. Federal. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Local people, local decisions. And welcome back. That clock is now running. 35-point lead for the Vikings here in the third quarter. And Gursky kicks this one. This one goes through the end zone so for a touchback. Six, five. Well, he had the opening kickoff, too, right. so... Yeah, had one that didn't get through, so. So that's five of six. Right. The rarely kept stat in high school sports. Right. It's an important one because oh you gosh. saw what happened when he did kick it out of the end zone. He ran it back to the 40. That's right. They had the best field position of the night. So here come the Riders trailing 35 to 0, first and 10 from their own 20. Cape and Lopen will be home with Smyrna next week. And the Riders will head to St. George's on Saturday. It looks like Dover's up 18-14 on Smyrna. And they don't have Kilby, right? They do not have Kilby, no. Carry by right picks up about nine and a half. Dover might not have Kilby, but they have so many weapons. Uh, you know. They have enough. And here tonight we have Markai James. Yes, That's the Markai James show. He's good Kilby, for four Kilby, touchdowns. Kilby was on his way to 2,000 yards. What's the status of his injury? Uh, I've heard a couple different things. Maybe, maybe done for the year, maybe not. And this is number one on the carry, Bo Walker. Bo Walker picking up positive yards. Picks up about seven. It's going to be our second and three. Bo Walker only a junior. That's his second touch tonight on the ball. He had a reception and a run. He was in as a blocking back on a couple other plays. Yep, Dover up 18 to 14 on Smyrna. That game nowhere near over. Not with those two. I think without Kilby, maybe they switched up their. Well, they still got Parker. They got Cosme. They got a big line, big experience line. Parker's exciting. Yeah. So it's number 24 on the carry. Cox, and he's got enough for a rider first down. Steps out of bounds, but running clock doesn't matter. I do like that running clock, <laughs> yeah. especially if I'm the guy working the clock. Just keep it running. But it stops the, you know, it gets the game over, limits the chance of injuries, limits the chance of the emotions of getting somebody thrown out of a game. I'm all for it. Right. <coughs> Except when I'm on the, on the other end of yeah, it. Yeah, I hate that. 
First and 10 for the Riders at their own 46. Pistol formation with the up back. Vinny wide to the far side. Hand off to Walker. He's got some running room out across the 45. First down, round to the 40. Looks like things are getting a little heated. Looks like a 71 for Cape took a shot, but seems to be up and moving around okay. I think on this one, they're not going to be offsetting penalties. No. I, well, we got to get our books out first. Coach Frazier, he is taking 71 out of the game, though. Yeah, it looks like he's going to make a couple substitutions, get some of his starters out with the running clock and up 35 nothing. Of course, there's no running clock right now because it happened at the end of the quarter. Long discussion going on here. They don't have their books out this time, Scott. As long as they're not writing your name down in there. That's right. Oh, nope, they're pulling the book out. Well, I got an unsportsman leg on the announcer. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that's ever no. happened. Did you see the referee in the uh, in the game this past weekend that said to the uh, announcer not to play the music? Yes. There, he's going to give him a penalty? Yes. Yeah. So it looks like there's going to be some unsportsmanlike activity. The coach is saying just because they do it doesn't mean That's you right. have to do it. Mm, that sounds good. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. In theory. <laughs> yeah. I think wisely, Cape Henlow been taking out a few of their guys. Mm -hmm. Well, looks like we're breaking the meeting up. All right, let's get the running clock back going. Let's figure out the calls. Checking their list. Picking up their laundry. Coach Frederick does not look amused at this explanation. That we're grouping up again. See, I think the clock should be there running during this whole time. Well, I ended the quarter. They have to flip the field. Yeah, I saw that. Total is 30 yards. Yeah, 30 yards. Mm -hmm. there. Wow, okay. <coughs> and we end the quarter. Well, a lot of action packed into those 10 seconds. Well, it took longer to figure it out than it did the. An ejection, 30 yards and penalties, the end of the quarter, and the start back up of the running clock. So I'm going to say that's the beginning of the end for this game. <laughs> right, right. For him, for Caesar Rodney tonight. So we flip the field. It'll still be Riders ball because they got a first down on the play. So it's, it's going to be first and ten. I'd say the white out was very successful tonight. Right. Wonder if they'll put white on again when Smyrna comes to town next week. You don't want that sea of red coming in here though. You want to you want to mix that up a little bit. 
We'll see what Smyrna can pull out now tonight. Down by four against Dover. Dover driving. Biggest game in the state today, probably. Here, here comes the cleanup crew call. And I could use some of those guys to help me load up here tonight. So. And we group up again. I don't think they understand the running clock theory that we're trying to. <laughs> we're trying to uh, yeah, help I think, them get going. I think that they're not in agreement with us. Well, it looks like Seifert and Brandywine are headed back to the field, Scott. Okay. Finish that 43 seconds and possibly overtime. 7-7? Seven, 7-7. Seven. Seven, seven. Off a of lightning delay. That's good. We did and a game. we're still not done. We did a game. Was it this year or last year? They had a lightning delay with a minute left, and they were like, you know yeah. what? We're just calling the yeah. game. Game over. Yeah. So, Cesarani goes to get on the ball, and the referee sends him back. Are we ready to go? Looks like we're ready to go. Cape Henlopen's calling their defensive play. Cesar Rodney's lined up. Here we go. Here we go. Clock running. 12 to go. And ticking. First and 10 for the Riders. And it's right again. And he takes it out across the 30. That's 99 for Cape. Tremaine Batson, the sophomore on the tackle. Pickup of about five on the play, second and five. I like how Wright runs downhill. He gets He's, ahead he of He has steam. run the ball well here in really the well. third quarter. Now fourth quarter. He gets positive yards every play. I don't remember him being much of a focus on the offense the last time we had no, him. No, they had uh, Walker in the backfield uh, and um, Kassan Bay. There he comes on the toss with a head of steam. He's got the first down. Out across the 35 to about the 37. And that's number 20, Ja'Kai Payne on the tackle. He was one of your players to watch. Okay. He's a senior from Cape Henlopen. I do like uh, Payne very nonchalant when he makes the tackle. First down for Cesar Rodney. Ball at their own 38-yard line. Announcers like the guys that get up real excited, and you know for sure who, you made know the who tackle, did it. Yeah. Right. Paying a cool customer out there on the on the end. Trips to the bottom of the formation. Pistol with right in the backfield. Correction. Track that's number one. Walker throws incomplete. Looks like he overthrew Kane. Kane had a step on the defender. He also had uh, number six, Harris, deep. Timmons just didn't see him and couldn't deliver the ball to Kane. He had a linebacker he on him. He's also rolling out to his left. He's rolling out to his left. Makes it is it, tough to yeah. get your shoulders squared up when you're running out. That deep throw, yeah. Second and 10 for Cesar Rodney. But you know, he's a dual threat quarterback too, so when he's out there, you gotta be careful. You can't break loose and rip off some that was on their one good drive. I think he had a 25-yard yeah, scramble. He, where we thought he was getting sacked. Yeah. Right on the carry, and he's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. Brings up third and 10. And that's number 99 on the tackle again for Cape and Lopin, Tremaine Batson. Number 20, Jukai Payne in on that one again. Third and 10 for Cesar Rodney Clock going under nine minutes. Coming up at the end of the game, we'll have the active pest solution pest of the game. And for two weeks in a row, real surprise who the Louis Pizza player of the game will be. Shocking. Yeah. It's going to be the king. That's right. And that's not Elvis. And you got to think for Cesar Rodney. Pass out to Kane, 
And Kane picks up about set eight on the play. He's going to bring up a fourth and two. That's six Brent Scott on the tackle for Cape Henlopen. And 24 Quadrell Richards was there on the coverage. You got to think for Caesar Rodney, what do we, what do, you know, what do we need to do? Where, where do we go back to the drawing board? What do we do good? What, you know, what do we need to work on? You know, they're staring down the 0 and 7 record right, right now. So for them, they got to put together a good game plan for next week. Fourth and three. And uh, Caesar Rodney moved on that one. I think K Penn Lupin switched their stunt, and Caesar Rodney went with them. So back him up five. Yeah, Bodie Frederick set up, and then he switched him. Looked like he was going to do a stun that pulled off the right tackle. Makes it a his. fourth and eight. And CR not penalized much until the last, like, three minutes here, and it's just going one right after another. Like the wheels just the, coming off. The wheels are falling off the bus. I mean, we've seen a lot of games where Caesar Rodney came in here. You know, we've been doing games for a long time now and watching these games for a long time. Caesar Rodney came in here and put it on Cape many a day, and uh, not so this year. Sussex Central. 14-7 win over St. George's. So the Knights putting themselves in a position for postseason. They just keep chugging along that train. That wing T train just keeps moving. And CR is going to take a timeout. And we'll just stay right here with it. I'm going to get a timeout. Get everyone get on the same page. So the Knights move to 2-0. and They have Dover next week. At Dover. That could be the game of the week. Yeah, Glenn Frazier, will have, he does have that game next week. He's a true professional. He's been lucky, man. He's had all the good games this year there in Kent County with Dover and Smyrna. Uh, that's what happens sometimes. They but, could be moving us around a little bit. Could get but, some upset hey, well, games. Next, uh, our last game of the year is going to be Sussex Central and Smyrna. So Sussex Central steals one out of Dover. It could be for the division champ district championship. I mean, depending on what happens now, I mean, Dover could have a letdown next week. Sussex Central coming in. Sussex Central's a tough customer. They're a tough out. Well, it's strong defense. And the it, later in the season it goes, strong defense. The better they get. Yeah. And wing T running offense seems to work, especially when it's cold. 2.45 to go in that Smyrna-Dover game. is 18-14 to 14 Dover. What a game that is. The Riders going for it on fourth and eight from their own 40. Why not, right? Bodie Frederick with the and pressure. he's got the first down. That's 20. Uh, is that 20 or 10? 10. And there's going to be a flag on the play. A pink flag comes flying in at the end of the play. That was Kemp on the catch. His first catch of the night. Face mask. That's the tack on face mask penalty. Caesar Rodney looking with six minutes left to get a sentimental victory with a touchdown. <clears throat> well, you take away the, you know, they, they don't Four have Four turnovers? That, well, no, on that drive where they, they get to the 30 yards and penalties, they were down in keep, deep in Cape territory. Just say, uh, you got to learn, you know, when things are going bad, you can't make them worse. And... It's going to be growing pains as they're trying to rebuild the program. Yeah, sometimes when things start to come bad, though, they snowball on you. That's right. And they are snowballing tonight. First and 10 at the 30, the Cape 30. Cape trying to preserve their shutout. Uh, incomplete. Yeah, I think Keane kind of broke late on that. Right. He was under pressure. Tim is under pressure looking for Kane to break off his route. 5.30 to play here. The band is striking up yes, a song, trying to get K Pen Loop and motivated to. Finish off this game strong with five minutes left. Second and ten for the Riders. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket, and going to be brought down and sacked. 
Number 20, Payne. Yeah, and that's 56 for K. Penn Lope and Curtis. He's a junior. We're going to call that a sack? Yeah, we uh -huh. lost it too. 52 Curtis with a big sack. Probably a half sack because Kane or uh, uh, Ja'Kai Payne was on him too. We're going to call that a half sack. Yeah, give him each a half a sack. I used to argue with my coach, we should each get one. There, yeah. He's like, no, you get a half. Right. It's like, okay. I go get on the bench, camera. Yeah, yeah. Keep Pipe down, Chubby. Third, third 13. You got number one, Bo Walker, in the backfield. He's got three carries tonight and one reception. Yeah, he's going to get that on the screen. Cuts yeah. it back inside, and he's going to pick up about five on the play. And he doubles the number of receptions. Brings up fourth down. And there is going to be looks like maybe an injury timeout. Yeah, he looked shook up on the play. and He went down awkward. Yeah, he went down awkward. 24 was in on the tackle for K. Penn Lopen. And yes, Central Richards. Central beat St. George's 14-7. Typical Sussex Central was at the castle. How many fans did they announce were there? Ah, I don't know. It wasn't on. A million? It wasn't on a stream. <laughs> they got a newspaper guy one time to announce um, 7,000. <laughs> it's always a big inside joke. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard him. Oh, it, I hear one, everything. One turns to the other goes, how many do you think? He goes, ah, let's go with 3,200. Yeah, 3,211. <laughs> there were a lot of people there that night, I will say. It that. was on both sides, yes. Yeah. I mean, Caesar Rodney side, not very full tonight, but the Cape Hen Lopen, Bleachers, Pack, standing, standing room only around the whole outside, homecoming, big crowd. And, and so Kate. Walker able to hop off. So a low, a low leg injury. So it's going to be fourth and six at the 20, uh, 20 what is that now? Yeah, 27, 28. Uh, now he moves, the, moves it back. More than eight. Timmons takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, throws, incomplete. Turnover on downs, Cape and Lopen ball. Timmons had some zip on that, just could not connect. It looked like Kane out there uh, in the flat. I, it would not have been a first down, I don't think, if, uh, if he caught it. Decent pressure from uh, Frederick and uh, Brent Scott up the middle. Dover is about 45 seconds away. From going 7-0. We knew it was only a matter of time. They started putting all the pieces together up there. But they're, they're turning out to be quite the formidable opponent. Yes, in they the, are. They will host Sussex Central next week. That'll be a game. It looks like Smyrna has the ball with 46 seconds to go. Well, Smyrna's not out of it. Down by four with 46 seconds. At their own 35. And, here, and the way they can sling it, yeah. In this game, there's 250 left. Looks like all the starters still in for Cape on offense. Tingle throws downfield, overthrows Westcott. He had Westcott for a second. Westcott getting up a little gingerly, but I think he's okay. He got tripped up. Right yeah. After. He's heading off the field on his own, so. The trainer's not even, oh, here she comes. You hope that's not an ankle sprain going into, you know. I think he's okay. So 2.22 left, this game's winding down. 
so far. First and 15, finally on Cape and Lopen. Everything went right for Cape and Lopen. Tonight, absolutely. Looks like they're starting some substitutions. Number 12's in at quarterback. Hands off to 31. And he's going to go out of bounds. That is Anthony Francis on the carry. And 12, our new quarterback is Michael Thompson. He's a sophomore for Key Penn Lopen getting his first snap of the night. Smart by Coach Frederick, get the starters out, mm -hmm. get some reps for some of the younger guys. A lot of good things when you're up 35 nothing. Clock down a minute 30. It's gonna be Francis again, this time wrapped up in the backfield. Like number nine on the tackle, Dominic Pietta-Petters. Yeah, 31 is Anthony Francis. He's a sophomore for Cape Henlopen. Open, two consecutive carries. Looking to get his stats in the book for tonight. Approaching a minute to go here in the game. Third and four. Francis on the sweep, avoids a couple of tacklers. They come up about a yard short. And brought down about a yard short. That's three carries in a row for Francis. Good looking young runner for Cape Henlopen. Only a sophomore. And they can just not do anything because they Going to take the victory yep. We're going to let the clock run down and well, you can't na nail because it's fourth down. And the referee's going to stop it. And that's it. That's the final here at Cape and Lopen. The Vikings 35, the Caesar Rodney Riders. Zero. We'll take a quick commercial timeout. We'll be right back with our post game awards here on Delaware Live, powered by 302. From invading your home. With cold weather coming, overwintering pests are headed inside. If you're not proactive, you could be left with a pest problem. Expertise is needed to inspect, identify a problem, and offer environmentally sound solutions like active pest solutions. Prevention is the key to stopping cluster flies, stink bugs, crickets, and mice from entering your home. Protect your home with a proactive pest plan. Contact Active Pest Solutions, your local pest expert. For more information, visit DelmarvaExperts.com. And welcome back to Cape and Lopen High School. The Active Pest Solution ants are on the screen. Sky, I can only mean one thing. It's time for our Active Pest Solution pest of the game. Who do you got? I'm going to go with Wilson Nagurski. Nagurski, he's first kicker for me to be named pest of the game. But five out of five extra points. And five, five out of six zone. through the end zone. I mean, that's a difference maker right. in this game. Uh, as far as the pest goes. The one that he didn't kick out, they returned to 40 yards. Yeah, that so just goes to show you. How important that is. Let's go to our Louis Pizza player of the game. Here's our no doubter here. Mark Kai James, four touchdowns. Scott, what was his yardage on that? Hard, hard to argue with this choice, Mark Kai James. 19 carries for 216 yards. Like you said, four touchdowns, and he was named homecoming king. Right. This will be a night this young man will remember for a long time. Absolutely brilliant. He was the homecoming king. Final stats on the night. Caesar Rodney, 207 total yards, 87 passing, 120 rushing. Three huge turnovers. Or excuse me, four. Uh, total yards for the Vikings, 372, 134 in the air, 238 on the ground. No turnovers, 10 first downs. Next week we head back to Milford when the Bucks, 4-2, will take on the Sussex Tech Ravens, also 4-2 in a Class 2A District 3 game. Soto Concepts pregame show at 635. Kickoff at Seven. This weekend, the University of Delaware Blue Hens 5-1 and one, go to Hampton to take on the Pirates at 2, while South Carolina State Bulldogs at 2-4 and four head to uh, Dover to take on the Delaware State Hornets 1-5. and five. They kick off at noon. It's a big game in college football. It's the Big Ten, number 7, Penn State, 6-0. Goes to number 3, Ohio State, 6-0. Oh. That is a noon kickoff. That's a wrap for tonight's Downstate Game of the Week. Matthew Westcott, Dave Marvel, Kristen Mitchell, and Scott Cameron. I'm Benny Mitchell. Thank you for watching the final score again.
Cape and Lubin 35, Caesar Riding Zero. Have a safe, sports filled weekend from all of us here at Delaware Live, powered by 302 Sports. Good night, Delaware sports fans.